I'm Jimmy Recor, and we're about to start town meeting for Town of Conway, 2023. This is where we conduct the business of the town once a year, sometimes twice a year. I'm going to ask that we conduct this business with dignity and respect for each other. It does seem like the rest of the world are, is missing that right now, but in this room today, I would like that very much to exist, and will tr try my best to make it exist. Okay, so I guess we're, I'm calling this to order. First of all, there are going to be speakers, there always is, Darius Modesto from the school from the school and people like that who aren't from town, I'm asking you if it's okay if people not from town speak today. Yes. Thank you. Now we're gonna do a little check. So please have your clickers in your hand. I'm gonna ask a question and I want you to Use your clicker to answer. This is just a test. We want to make sure your clickers are lighting up and we get it up here on our board. So the question is, sports related, do the Red Sox suck or not? Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> so we're going to end up probably around 150. So when we see that, we can call stuff. Okay. Okay, does anybody, if, if you don't think your clicker is working, uh, anybody have a question with that? You can go out and change it. Um, When you push your button, the screen should light up with a number or a letter reflecting which one you just pushed. So if you don't see that, if you don't see any activity on the little screen, then just please go out to the check-in table and exchange it. If you do, you are good to go. And it says okay, right? Yes. They all yeah, they all, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, but they're all, they all do it. No. And just so people who've never used these before know, you can change your mind as many times as you want during the open voting period. It will only count your last click. Um, we, I've been told you can ig just ignore that. Okay. okay. Is there a preamble? Who's doing it? Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a motion to skip the reading. Yeah. Okay. Article 1.
Mr. Mr. Moderator, I move that town meeting vote to accept the town reports as printed in the town annual report. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Our motion is approved. Article two. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 114 through 900 of Article 2 as presented in the warrant for a subtotal of $2,880,982. Do I have a second? Discussion. Okay, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 2A is approved. Pardon? 131.4. Article 2B. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 300A and 300B of Article 2 as presented in the warrant for a subtotal of $2,135,585. Second. Discussion. So on your on your warrant, it's on page two, the back side of the first page. I didn't make extra copies. I figured we mailed it to everybody, so too bad. We do have some extra. Discussion? Okay. Stand by. I have a few extra copies of the warrant up here if there's 
people out there that didn't bring theirs with them that they received in the mail? Phone's not working. All three. Nope. Nope. Uh, just fill at the end there. Okay. So, by way of explanation. <clears throat> uh, now we go. Okay. So, by way of explanation to the gentleman, um, the um, in, in the mail you would have received the warrant. The warrant is your legal warning from the town that, that what the amounts will not exceed. Um, the, the, what, we are actually, what we actually vote on are, are motions, and those have, those have been placed on everybody's chairs. Th those are what we are legally voting on. Uh, it, if, if you want a do-over of something, that would be a motion for reconsideration. Um, and that, that, that would be a motion that somebody has to make. I was but saying that I don't think a lot of people are still wearing And that, that may or may not. And, and yeah, so, so, so you can make a motion or somebody else can make a motion. Nobody's here to try to trick anybody or, you know, we're open to fully discussing everything and having it, questions answered. And, and um, please, everybody, you, when you're about to ask a question, please get to a microphone so everybody can hear you. I move that we do a duo. Microphones. Can you, can, can you get to a microphone, somebody? I have a broken rib. I'm not going to get to that. Sorry. Uh, my name is Pat Lynch, and uh, I'd like a motion to reconsider. We have a motion and a second to reconsider the first two articles. Second. We've got seconds. Any discussion? Uh, we're going to revisit, I'm just being clear on this, we're going to revisit one and two, two A and two B. Okay. No further discussion? I think some of the question is, um, this is just the inflation raising regular stuff and the, the motions are the things that we have to consider that are complicated? Because it sounds like we're saying yes to everything almost right away, right now. I think it's just not clear the difference between the warrant and the motions, if you could explain that. <laughs> So the, the warrant is, uh, and, and the motions are based on the town's, um, it, it's the budget that the town is presenting to you. The basic concept behind this year's budget is to provide level services. That's what department heads were asked to formulate a budget to do. Um, the, 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 it, it, the, the way that we do it is because uh, there's a lot of individual departments that this, you know, you, your, your people are free to identify the budget, the line item of concern and just and ask questions about that. But we have no way of knowing what people really want to talk about. We try to move the meeting along. A lot of these individual items are non controversial in my opinion or whatever it would seem like not necessarily discussion worthy uh, but it, it's up to people you know we you we are the legislator the legislature we decide so if you want to you, a, a motion to reconsider has been made um, state you know it's up to people to state what they want 
reconsidered what they want to talk about, and um, otherwise we vote. Any other discussion? Priscilla Lynch, are you supposed to read the rules first or tell us what the rules are? That's happened in past years. Okay. I'm going to say this. This, this is, you, you, please, don't, please don't run away. But this, this document here, I understand is the, what you're worried about being legal, but doing this and this, um, if, if I could. meeting wise is, is kind of turning into a disaster. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. If I may, this is, this is on me because I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that the legal language, what will show up in the town meeting minutes, is what you are voting on on the motion. So I wanted to be as transparent as possible and have people see what the legal language was you're voting on. But the warrant that you got contains all the other information, including the warrant light, which everybody has on their chair, which explains everything that's in all the different Warren articles. So I apologize if that's causing a lot of confusions. I was trying to be transparent. And just, and, um, just to add to that as well, the, the, the other purpose of providing motions is so that we as a group, as a community, um, can familiarize ourselves with how which the rules that we have to have. We have to have some sort of rules to conduct this meeting. Um, Otherwise, it's chaos, and 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 so 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 the rule the rules in in terms of um, how how we how we address how we get things that we want in this meeting, how we ask for things that we want is through a motion, and that's you know there there's there's a sort of a history a recent history a lot of of people that have concerns comments questions they phrase it in that way but but ultimately they expect someone else to say I make a motion to do such and such and we're, we're trying to recreate the democracy muscle um, that our forefathers in this town used to have that just to, to, to you know that, that when you have a comment when you want a policy when you when you um, you know you do it in the form of a motion so um, uh, Stein Fike uh, Shelburne Falls Road I, I think I was confused when I entered there was a lot of paper on the chair that I didn't go through and I realize now that there's a page that says motions and then there's one on the highway budget and then there's one on the equipment request which spoke to my question about you know I had my warrant and I had circled at home $82,000 that I wanted to just ask, sorry, ah, broken rib, don't get one. Um, <laughs> ask about the $82,000. Um, but it went so fast, the vote went so fast, I didn't get a chance to do it. So I didn't even vote, which it sounds like perhaps other people. And then I, of course, did not get to the Miller Lite thing because <laughs> there's so many pieces of paper. Anyway, so that's why I had motioned for a redo. Somebody else said it better and somebody else seconded. So I just wanted to hear about the highway department. Okay. The 82,000. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion to reconsider? Let's vote. Hold on. Can, can I, I, I'm going to ask for a vo vo voice vote on that. All in favor? Aye. Motion to reconsider. Aye. Opposed? Ellen Watson, Manning Road. 
I think what's not clear is we're being asked to say yes to a bunch of numbers. What relation do those numbers have to do with the numbers in the specific things? That's what we don't understand. If we've oh. already said yes to everything, why are okay. we going to have the, you know, that's what we don't understand. May I? I'm sorry, and you're absolutely right. So if you look at the motions, if you look at your warrant, Article 2 is split out. On the left, it will say, like next to department number, it says A. If you go on the other page, a little further down, it says B. Then it says C. Those are the, the A is the entire general fund budget. Um, sorry, not the entire, everything minus the schools. B, C, D, and E are the votes on the different school budgets. So Article 2 is split out into five parts. Everything else and then the four school budgets. Hi, I'm Bob Armstrong. Uh, wow. Uh, sure, I'm in shirt, sure. Uh, the speaker. Uh, I, I don't think anyone is explaining very well what's, what you're looking at. So you got a warrant in the mail. And the, and the warrant is this legal document prepared by the select board, often prepared before we've really finalized, they've really finalized, what all these numbers mean. And it will say, we want to spend this much money and it might come from here, it might come from Jesus there, God. we might borrow it, you know, we, we don't know what fund it's going to come from yet. But this is the amount of money that we're going to ask the town to provide. When we become the town meeting, we will have the chair of the select board reads the motion, and it's different than what you see in this warrant. Because by that time, the select board has figured out what the language is that we want, the legal language we want you to vote on. And, then, and people in the audience, you know me, and everybody in town would say, I don't understand why it's different. And this question would come up many times. And so a few years ago, the select board wrote all the motions down exactly like the chair is going to read them to you. And it, only, it says exactly where the money is going to come from. It says the exact number we're going to vote on. And so you, you really only need the list of motions. Now, a couple years ago, people said, gee, there isn't really very much information here. And so the select board started writing up the warrant light, which added a little bit of text to it and it sort of explained what these things are all about. We expected people might read it at home or come to the, come to the here early. But the, the motions that you got on your chair is what we're going to vote on. It should be exactly what Phil is going to read, and it will have the number. And that's the number we vote on. You, you were asked to vote on, art, well, Article 1 was the first one that just said, you know, we're going to accept the town reports. Then Article 2, we voted on A, which was about the first 10 or 20 items in Article 2, which is the town budget. We divide that up into little groups because it's easier than voting on the whole thing and we might have discussion about it. So we'll say we're going to vote on Group A. And then we voted on Group B, which was the grammar school budget. But, and those are in the motion, 2A, 2B. We're still going to vote on 2C. We didn't get there yet. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that you inform us of the rules of this meeting, including what it means if something is tabled, what it means if we vote, this, you know, if a vote is retaken, what it means when you can bring articles up again. That's important information for people to have. Not in the warrant, not anywhere. I have seen it. I've heard it in other years. It's important that you provide that right now before anything is voted on. Okay. I have a motion and a second to move, move the vote on the motion to reconsider. Am I correct in that, Cindy? Correct. 
Okay. So, so, look, okay, the way I think, the way it works is a motion is brought to the floor. It, sometimes they need seconds, sometimes they don't. There's a 714-page book I can give you all to read about how this all really works, whether it be Robert's Rules of Order or we have a new book on on running a town meeting, but a motion is brought before us. You most of the time, and hundred well, pretty much for us all the time, you need a second, and then there's discussion, open discussion, and then you move, vote on that motion. When that, and those are really the rules. You can't, if there's a motion on the floor that has been seconded, you can amend it, but you can't move on with the meeting until that motion is voted on. So right now, the best thing, as far as I'm concerned, that we can do, we have a motion to really start over. And someone, you know, we have now have a call to, to go on, you know, to vote on that motion, that's a legal motion. And I, I, I understand what you're saying and I understand the frustration of the warrant and the motions and the warrant light and look, it, it confuses me because for all of my life we've pretty much read this and worked off of this and it worked very well, I thought, in the past. But apparently people don't think that now and want more transparency and I'm seeing exactly the opposite from the paperwork we have now because this is this is the chaos we talk about not having, and we're, we're stuck in it right now. So, my suggestion would be, I hope that simplified things a little bit for you, but we have a motion on the floor to redo, to start from, from scratch. It's been called to a vote. My suggestion would be we vote on it and Truly start over. We did have a voice vote. We've now, um, we can now do a clicker vote. The town clerk uh, was diligently creating a, that so we could go to this. So we can go to this now if you would like. And it, there's a motion to call, so we're going to take a vote if that's okay. No okay. discussion? No further discussion? No further discussion after the move in the second. Okay. Are we ready to vote? Yes. Let's vote on the motion to, re to reconsider. Five seconds. Voting's closed. It passes ninety eight fifty six. Okay. So we're going to start over. I'm sorry about all this confusion. This is, this is not good. Um, let's take a second and take a breath. And while we're doing that, I'm going to read this to you. There's a voice missing from this town meeting that probably would have added to all the discussion we had already. And it wouldn't have needed a microphone most of the time. Just about in the front of your... Uh, Town annual report this year on the back of the front page, on the back of the cover, were these words, a dedication to that man, Malcolm Kors. 
Just about anyone who participated in town activities, attended a town meeting, or frequented Baker's store knew Malcolm Course. On occasion, he would appear gruff, can, as a gruff, cantankerous old Yankee, but those who knew him better or worked with Malcolm on numerous town projects over the years saw another side. They grew to appreciate his lifelong dedication to family, community, and public service. They also learned he was a born storyteller who could gladly share his knowledge of our town's history. Everyone who ever listened to Malcolm has stories to recount. Malcolm's own story began on a family farm in Shelburne Falls Road. He liked to relate how in his youth he would ride to town in a farm wagon on Saturday nights for shopping. Years later, in 1967, he used the same wagon in the town's 200th anniversary parade. Malcolm graduated from Arms Academy in 1952 and married Winona Hathaway in 1954. The couple lived in a house next to the post office and years later moved with their four children to the house Malcolm built on Truce Road. He spent most of his career as a heavy equipment operator or mechanic, working his way up and traveling extensively, even to such faraway places as East Germany and Mongolia. In Conway, Malcolm pursued a lifelong commitment to community in both public and private capacities. Working with others, his efforts left visible legacies around town. As a teenager in 1949, he was one of the volunteers who helped dig our valued Conway pool. He was a member of the United Congregational Church in Conway for over 60 years, having served at times as deacon and custodian. Throughout his long life, he was active in Tri-County Coon Club, Conway Sportsman's Club, Conway Snowmobile Club, and, and president of the Snowmobile Association of Massachusetts. He was a proud member of the Masons and a dedicated Shriner. It is, uh, it's, it, it is thanks to Malcolm that a colorful cavalcade of Shriner vehicles uh, enlivened our 250th anniversary parade. In a public capacity, he served on the Festival of the Hills Committee for some time, and in 1999, he was named to the Historical Commission. 2002, he was appointed the Historical Commission's representative to the Community Preservation Act Study Committee. After objectively considering the pros and cons, he saw the CPA's benefits to Conway and helped secure its passage at town meeting and subsequent town ballot. On occasion, his voice at town meeting defending the CPA was much needed and effective. He remained a member of the CPA committee, serving as chair for the last few years until his health declined. The two red historic district signs on the either side of Route 116 in Conway Center are yet another of his legacies financed by a modest CPA appropriation in 2008 and installed by members of the Historical Commission. He also served on the Conway Board of Assessors from April 2008 until January 2022, also serving on the Conway 250th Committee, Malcolm foresaw the need to start early on preparations for that event. Along the way, he cajoled volunteers to resurrect and repair the same old farm wagon from the 1967 parade in time for the upcoming 250th parade. Now donated to the town, in safekeeping, let's hope a new generation proudly displays the wagon for the next anniversary. With Malcolm's passing, we have lost a dedicated member of our community whose volunteerism, work ethic, and dogged persistence, amen, have made our small town a better place to live. We hope that his final legacy will be to inspire others to do the same. All right. Will we be voting on that motion I made? <laughs> I mean, you didn't inform the group of all of the rules, under what conditions, what it means to table something, under what conditions they can be brought up again. It's important information. 
and I, I, I understand what you're saying. Good. Um, I know there are people here who probably haven't been to town meeting before. Can I see some hands? Good. I think what I'm seeing is the confusion is, and this is, happens every year, we pick a certain amount at the beginning of the budget, like one through 900, which is, you know, you're not gonna read every single line. So what happens, I think people didn't understand that when the discussion came, they could have brought up the points on the individual items that they had a question about. So I think that was the confusion. And that if people understand that when that motion was made, you know, during the discussion, if you want to bring one of those up, but no one did, probably because they didn't understand. Then you stop and do the school, which is always a big issue, and we have a lot of discussion about. So I think it was just a misunderstanding of not knowing that was the time to step in and say line whatever about whatever the lady spoke about. So if we go back and do that particular one, people can talk about the issues that they might want to talk about, and then we can move on to the schools. Do you think that was the problem? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Bob Armstrong. So, so Patricia is asking for something very specific. And back when, when we had a, a lawyer for the moderator, he always talked in lawyerly terms about what those terms meant. No offense, Jimmy. I, I, I love you very None much. None taken. Uh, uh, and, and so there are two items that often get called for in this meeting. One is uh, tabling a motion, and the other is uh, a, a, a call, no, a, 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 a move, a motion to move. And, and they're important, and basically when you want to, when you want to table an item, you, you have to get recognized by the moderator, and then you can say, I move to table, and then we have a vote, and a move to table is a two-thirds vote. And a table means we're not going to vote on it. We're just going to, we're, we're, and it means we are going to lay it on the table and we're not going to vote on it. Now, it, it could be brought up at a future town meeting, at a future time, but we're not going to vote on it in this meeting. Um, a, a call to move the article is, is you can raise your hand, you have to get recognized by the moderator, you say, I want to move the article. Now, that means that all discussion has to stop and it immediately has to be followed by a vote, and it's a 50% vote, right? Or is it a two-thirds vote? Uh, two-thirds vote, I think. I mean, they're both really, they're both, you know, significant, important items. So, so we might call for, a, a, we might move an article, then discussion has to stop immediately, and we vote on that. Whether, whether we're going to stop discussion, if that fails, discussion can continue. If we move to table, that means we're not going to vote on it at all. So thank you, Bob. My name is Priscilla, um, and that is what I was asking for, this information that's here. But the other question I have is there is one rule that if something had been tabled, I believe, or defeated, that it can be brought back up after a period of time if that period of time had expired and revoted on. So I think that's important for people to know as well. So can you give us that information? As yeah. It, as it stands now. As it stands now, the motion for reconsideration has been made and it has been approved by the town meeting. So right now we're we're back at the beginning. I so, so 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 as, asking about what rules apply the the rule the rules that apply are literally a 735 page book. I like, understand. But we should know them, and the people should have a general understanding of them. And I know they were explained in the past, and I know that rule is there, and we, people should have it to use it if they need to or want to. It has been used in the past. And so maybe this is part of the motion to reconsider. Is to the, 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 no, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's fine. not. I'll make a separate motion that people be informed of the rules, including that rule. Mary McClintock. Um, everybody got the blue book in um, the mail. And if you open up on the back of the first white page, back of the first 
white page, what do the following terms mean? This term, dismiss an article means to defeat it. Postpone an article indefinitely, defeats it. Take no action on an article, defeats it. Lay the question on the table, kill or postpone a measure, meaning something can come back to it. Table the question, kill or postpone a measure. Move the previous question, cut off debate, and vote on the issue at hand. I think that what it's being asked is commonly at town meeting, there's an explanation of how we're gonna do business here. And that some people have done it before, some people haven't done it before, but it's just sort of a reminder, this is what we're doing. And I think what we're getting is concern about that. Um, in terms of, you know, there is some kind of time limit if you table something. Somebody say, say um, question four, I don't even know what that is. Somebody said, I want to table it, we voted, we agreed to table it. And then we're down at question number, you know, 30, and it's been an hour and a half, and then somebody says, I want to bring question four back up. I think the question that Priscilla had was, what's that time period when between when you, something is initially tabled and then somebody can later say, can we bring that back? And that's, I think, a rule that is Priscilla, that has been used in, task, in town meeting before. That tactic has been used in town meeting before and having everybody understand what that rule is. So I don't know if anybody has in the 742 page book that how long is that time period? I learned that rule by attending town meeting yep. and being informed. I just think you need to inform. Okay. Okay. We're gonna, okay. Since we've gone through reconsideration, we're back at square one. I can ask you guys some questions. We can, we can make motions before we go, go in the article one again. We can make motions to, we can actually set those times. So we, I can say, I'd like to, I, I wanna entertain a motion that discussion on any article be a certain amount of time. You know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. We can do it that way. We can also make a motion right now to say set a time for half an hour or you know whatever time you want to reconsider an article. You know what I mean? To, to table something and bring it back. We can make those rules up right here, right now, if you'd like. Otherwise, we're going to go with. Motions, if, if you want to amend a motion, that's something you can do. If you want to table it, something you can do. But we'll just go through town meeting as we normally do. Does everybody pretty much know what's going on? Suzanne Artinia. So I make a motion that if the motion is made to table something and it is voted yes, that we kill it. There's no bringing it back. It's zero time. Agreed, but it's not going to get a second, so it's going to die anyway. before the end of the meeting. It can be brought back. If somebody comes, pardon? Or at a future meeting. If somebody decides, so if we were to table something and the meeting wasn't over, somebody could make a motion to bring it back or it can come back at a future meeting. A lot of times things are tabled because either there's not enough information 
or people need to come back and consider things differently. It's not, and so then it'll be brought on to a future meeting. There's usually not a reason to bring it back in the same meeting, but there could be, and you can, as far as I can remember yes. from my years of being a superintendent and doing, <laughs> and doing um, uh, to, uh, meetings. So that's what I, I don't think we need a special motion for this meeting. I think that's just the way it is. Does anyone, lawyer here, know any different? <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to read this <clears throat> that I found after Google searching here. Tabling a motion or laying a question on the table generally means to kill it, but it does not mean to kill it finally. To take an issue from the table, so remember that statement, take an issue from the table, means to consider an issue the town meeting previously tabled. So that's what you would have to say. If something gets tabled, you want to bring it back up, you have to make a motion to uh, let's see, to take, an issue, to take an issue from the table. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Bob Armstrong. Yep. Complicate it slightly more. That motion has to come from somebody who voted no. That's right. Right? In other words, you know, if you voted yes and you won an article, you can't then later say, I want to bring it back. Somebody who voted no, and, and it's really wonderful that we have a moderator who has a magic memory, and he will remember how you voted. As all moderators do. Hi, uh, Chris Bathurst, 393 Williamsburg Road. This is not a motion, just as an observation. I feel like we're being strangled with process. We're not getting into substance. We only have so many hours to do the people's business. I don't understand what's going on here. I've never seen this happen before. More uh, I. And I don't know if it has to do with magic. So I say let's get on with business. If there's items to discuss to get into the substance of the matter, I trust in general the finance committee, the select board, you all worked your asses off to put these numbers together to make a decent recommendation. We have survived many, many years in this town. We got people that give a crap about this town. I say, let's roll, folks, and let's get out of class. <laughs> cool. Okay. Ah, uh, Article one. I think the way I'm going to work this from now on, meaning I'm going to say, instead of just say Article 1, I'm going to say Article 1 on your warrant S says to hear reports of select board, capital improvements, planning committee, town clerk, treasurer, school committee, tax collector, board of health. Is there any motions on Article 1? I move the town meeting vote to accept the town reports as printed in the town annual report. I have motion and a second. Discussion? Steve Dinklocker, Graves Road. Um, I have a question about the um, finance committee report. Um, there is no discussion of the dramatic increase in the debt service. Um, I'd like to know why that's not covered, Alan. Really live? Yes. Right, thank you, Stephen. <coughs> Alan Singer, Finance Committee Chair of Rolling Brook Road. We didn't cover it because, you know, the debt service has already been voted on in previous town meetings. And that uh, we just didn't think to bring it up. It's for the town garage. There's a level sinking fund. I just didn't think to cover it on my finance is, committee report. Is it a variable interest rate or not? The answer is it has to be reset every year, but uh, for the next five years, I think it's set. It's set like 3% or something. Okay. And what Jan Warner did was uh, something which you can do from the Department of Revenue, which is have a level sinking fund, which you see in one of the additional warrants in this town meeting that has a uh, level payment every year for debt service for the whole life of the loan, which has about 10 years remaining. Because last year when we voted on this, it was much less. So this is... The well, that's because we have the paving note. There's a town garage and there's the paving note. There's two different notes. Okay, so this is additional paving. What went on, yes, correct. On Shelburne Falls Road, yes. Yes, 
It's well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Devlin Selman, 2300 Main Poland Road. I just have a question about Article 150. Uh, there's a decrease in spending of $2,400. Oh, that's not the article. Oh, we're not there yet. We're okay. not there My yet. My apologies, sir. Okay. Okay. We're going we're gonna to move. Um, uh, I think we'll do an electronic vote, please. Go ahead and vote. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Article one passes 151 to seven with two non-votes. Article two, we're gonna deal with A first, and that would be lines 114 through 900 of your warrant. Are, they, are there any motions to Article 2A? I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 114 through 900 of Article 2 as presented in the warrant for a subtotal of $2,880,982. Do I have a second? second? Discussion. I don't exactly know how to do this at this point. Please identify yourself. Well, my name is Bill Como. I live on uh, uh, Bardwell's Ferry Road. And I was coming up here to make a motion, but somebody made a motion before me. And my motion would be to consider these items in four chunks. Item 114 through 151, 159 through 193, 210 to 433, and then 433 to 900. That way we could look over them and we could agree with them section by section. I have a motion and second to further break up section A of Article 2. Any discussion on that? We'd have to change the motion and add up all those numbers. Because otherwise we wouldn't have a total that we're working on. Yeah, why can't we just discuss it? Can you raise your hand, please? Okay. 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 Brittany Nickerson, South Shirtshire. I don't know why we can't just discuss it as is. There should be plenty of time for open discussion and they don't need to be added up separately. Um, so I would like to. Okay, we still have a motion on the floor to split this up further. Any more discussion on it? Okay, I'm going to ask for a vo voice vote. I believe what Kenny's saying is correct. So we have a motion and a second to accept 2A, line 114 through 900. And, and specifically, you would need to amend the subtotals that were given as part of that first motion. Because if you break it up into chunks, that subtotal for the entirety would no longer apply. So. Bill, would you consider withdrawing your motion? <laughs> Okay. 
Hi, Hannah Harpester, um, Delabar Ave. So this is discussion on that motion. Um, the, the one uh, line I'm a little concerned about is the 192 public buildings. Um, it says this increase by $9,000 solely due to the cost of mowing the ball field, commons, and town buildings. Um, and I guess my question is, have alternatives to hiring a, a big lawn care company and using these big machines to do a lot of mowing, have alternatives to that been discussed? Because um, to my, as far as I can see, it's not that much land um, and it could probably be mowed by like human power rather than giant machines. Um, so that's, that's my comment slash question. Any other discussion? Article 2A. We should answer that. Yeah. That's Ron Sweet's answer. Hi again. I'm Devlin Selman at 2300 Main Poland Road. I just wanted to bring up 150, uh, the decrease in $2,400. Um, it says here cuts to mileage, technical services, postage, and office supplies. And I'm just wondering if that's why I have to pay a $435 um, fee to get public records um, for Nexamp. The, it's a billion dollar company that has put an industrial solar power plant behind our house and I have to pay $435 to get public records to learn about why it's been shut down for the past year and a half. Anybody wanna to speak to that? Well, I can say that every all the numbers in here were done and finalized before that request was made. It has absolutely nothing to do with that request. Uh, Steinpike, Shelburne Falls Road. Um, I just had a question about the highway um, initially, and then I discovered this highway department equipment request, is that is this reflecting the $82,000 increase, the chipper and all that stuff? N no, it is not. Um, the $82,000 increase, there were, there were three lines that caused the majority of the increase. Those were fuel, which we all know is volatile. Um, rentals of equipment, the uh, grader, the chipper, and the boom lift, as well as materials. Materials were pretty drastic increase. As an example, um, gravel went up from $18 a yard to $29 a yard. Hi again, sorry, so I'm at 23 on Main Point Road. I, I guess my other question is, since I did try to write it out um, this morning when I couldn't sleep, if I have to pay $435 for these public records, are other people going to have to pay $435 for these records once they're all organized and redacted, or is it just going to be me? That's a good question. I assume. I'll be honest. Um, my being new to do the, doing the public records, my assumption would be that because some, I, I will have already spent the time doing it, there would be no need that, what the payment is for is for the amount of time it will take to gather these records. Um, but you will already have them, so, and they're public, so you could give them to anybody you wished. Any other discussion? Uh, I move that we amend line item 150 to add 400 and whatever dollars to it to cover the cost of, um, of public records, um, collation or whatever it is. Point of order. That's an illegal amendment. We can't. We cannot raise 
line items beyond what's printed in the warrant. The warrant is the warning to the town of what the maximum on each line item could be. So there's two separate things here. One is the highway department capital requests, which are not before this body at this moment. What is before the body is the highway department operating budget, which was the 80 something thousand dollar increase, $82,000 increase. Okay, your, your, point, your points are being heard. You're good. Yes, well, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anybody in this room who hasn't heard that. Why are we approving all these funds? Mary McClintock. I would like to move the question and vote on um, 1A. Okay, we have a motion to vote on 2A. All in favor? Oh, good. Vote, please. Five seconds. Voting's closed. 2A passes 123 to 31. Article 2B. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 300A and 300B of Article 2 as presented in the warrant for a subtotal of $2,135,585. Do I have a second? Discussion. Resident school choice and then tuition in, and I don't understand. I'm not. I don't quite understand that language. So if somebody could explain those three categories and then break down the numbers for us, that would be great.
Good morning, everyone. Darius Modesto, your superintendent. Um, the current breakdown for Conway Grammar, uh, you have 132 students here, 63 which are school choice. In that school choice number are um, about a half a dozen that are tuitioned in. At, at Conway Grammar, we do have a, uh, a significant special needs program where we tuition in students from other districts, and which makes uh, great revenue for the school to help have that support so that we can keep our students um, with some certain special needs in our town, in our county school. So that's the difference between uh, tuition in and choice. Choice falls under the, school, uh, the choice numbers of the state and under that funding pattern. Hey, Committee Chair. I have a question, Darius, and it was beyond your realm, but I realized but to, to lobby when we're here, and that is, is there any motion by any of your uh, colleagues in the western part of the state to increase the rural aid to schools? If my understanding is correct, we get $5,000 per student, and that fee has not been raised in over 15 years. Okay. So the question regarding uh, school choice versus rural aid, don't, don't mix those two together. So school choice is... Uh, is not is right now we get five thousand dollars per student plus any additional monies that cost on the school. So the student receives special um, speech services or that kind of thing. We then bill on top of that five thousand dollar base. So you technically, if the student had a one to one or that kind of thing, that all of that would be reimbursed. So you get more than just five thousand dollars based on the needs of the students. Um, rural aid um, is the is the new uh, they're trying new funding mechanism from the state where they're trying to get rural schools more money. Um, right now in front of the legislature, you know, they're looking at trying to up it from the uh, $5 million now um, to $15 million, which we will see probably a 1% or 2% increase of our overall budget um, should that pass through the state legislature, which is you know, currently being discussed. So the two are separate um, within that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions on the budget? Yeah. Sure. Sure. So before you, um, you know, obviously our, when we move percentages, it moves a lot bigger than the money. Um, currently this year, a level service budget, we were not adding any positions and such, was 3.37%. We reduced that, um, and what made up that 3.37% was 2% in wage obligations. We, that's what we have contractually negotiated for COLA. There's also some step increases for some teachers in there as well, which makes it more than just 2%. Um, so that's about $40,000 in wage obligations alone. On top of that, we did about 1.37% on um, employee separation costs, which is our um, buying out of retirement, and um, some minor facility needs where we moved, um, you know, trash went up and that kind of thing. So that really put us at 337 we use ESSER funding, which is the federal, um, was the federal monies that they're trying to actually pull back the ARPA money. ESSER, the schools got the ESSER, ARPA went to the town. Um, but we're not talking about the debt ceiling, we're paying attention to that, we're talking about calling that back. But our, we've already, uh, they won't be taking this back. Um, but we, we put $21,000 of that to reduce your budget to a growth of, um, where am I at here, uh, to a 2.36. The actual growth of the budget for the school is 2.36 which is, you know, meeting under 2.5, should be very pleased with Thank you. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah, one, I have one more question. Can I ask that second? I think you're answering. I just wanted to ask if Conway is paying for kids to school choice out into other schools. And, and I didn't see that. I just couldn't figure out where to find that. Correct. Uh, there are students that do choice out to um, both other schools and charter schools. I don't have those numbers. And that bill goes directly back to the town when they go to, um, it doesn't go right to the budget. So um, where it does in the regional budget, it does not in the, um, in the uh, town. Yeah. Just like to add that we have no, no right to refuse someone's school choice if they choose to go out for another school, including a charter school, we have to pay for it. And, I, and, and Principal Gordon is waving at me, means she probably has information. Your, your school principal, Mr. Gordon? You gotta come to mind. I just wanna. Oh, oh, choicing out. I just wanted to know um, 
two things. Choicing out, um, we don't have a lot of students who come here and then choice out. Many of the students on our school choice out list we've never met before. So maybe they live closer to one of the other communities. I really watch those numbers to make sure we're not losing kids that we've had for any reason. And if we do, what the reason are. But that's not the, what happens in the majority of students. The other thing I wanted to just mention about school choice, because that always becomes a question in terms of budget. When school choice works, it means you don't have to increase your budget because of school choice children. So if, for example, if we have 10 kids in kindergarten, we need a kindergarten teacher. We could add five more school choice kids, maybe six, and it doesn't increase the budget. So a lot of people ask questions about school choice. When school choice doesn't work well, it's when you have to add teachers and staff for those school choice children. That's not the case with what we have going on here at Conway Grammar School. Any other discussion? Article 2B. Okay, let's vote. Oh, sorry. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to offer gratitude to everyone in town. Conway Grammar is the most amazing school. Two kids here, and we all support it. And so I just want to take that moment to say thank you to all of you. Praise. That's wonderful. <laughs> Everybody ready to vote? Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Two eight, uh, two B passes uh, one sixty four to two. Okay, Article Two, Section C. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items three ten A, three ten B, and three ten C of Article Two, as presented in the warrant, for a subtotal of one million six hundred and four thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars. This amount differs from the warrant because the assessment of $16,463 for the tennis courts listed on the warrant as part of the 20,281 under section 310C has been separated out as article 29A. I have a second, motion and second, discussion. Hearing no discussion. Can we vote? Sure. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Motion passes 158 to four. Two, two D. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 320A, 320B, and 320C of Article 2 as presented in the warrant for a subtotal of $171,272. Second. Second. Discussion? Hearing no discussion, can we vote? Please. What's the, what's the new total of the? Five seconds. No, that's mine. Now we're mine. Voting's closed. That motion passes one fifty nine to zero. Article 2, E. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate for line items 
330A and 330B of Article 2, as presented in the warrant, for a subtotal of $52,906 and a total in Article 2 of $6,862,174. Was that a second? Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. Um, that that was an inadvertent error when that was read. That 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 number um, that Lee accurately corrected me on is six million eight hundred and forty-five thousand seven hundred and ten dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 151 to six. Five. Five. Article three. I move that the town vote to set the salaries of elected officials as provided by Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 41, Section 108, to be made effective from July 1st, 2023, as presented in the budget. Second. Discussion? This, this is strictly a housekeeping kind of thing. This always used to just be done automatically without asking for permission. The lawyer says we should ask for permission. Any other discussion? Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Motion passes 155 to four. If you would come to the microphone, I understand, Stein, I can hear you great, but the people who are going to watch this at home because they couldn't come here on FCAT, these guys are recording this. The only way people at home will hear you is if you stand at a microphone. So, uh, uh, or Jimmy, if you could just quickly repeat a quick summary of what somebody says when they, when they don't come to the microphone, and I understand why we don't want everyone to do that. That would be great, but it's really, it's not for us. It's for the people at home. Thank you. Our so for you folks at home, I was just asking the select board recommendation. It says three to zero. I didn't know if the three was a no. I assumed it was a yes, but I didn't want to make that assumption. Thank you. Article four. I move that the town vote to approve the Frontier Regional School District establish a capital stabilization fund. A capital stabilization fund will, will allow Frontier Regional to create a dedicated account to save for future major capital projects. E&D, which is free cash, other available unrestricted fund funds and or budgeted monies may be used as a funding source. The goal of the fund would be to reduce capital assessments to the town by creating a transparent savings account. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Um, any discussion? Stogowski's uh, Reese Bridge Road. Um, 
What is the formula going to be for putting this money in? This is moving things forward. So this generation will be paying for something in the future. We're going to put money in this year and we're going to spend it five or 10 years down the road. Is, is there a different formula than the current one? So you asked really good questions about this when this was before the town last time. At that time, I was the only one here to answer questions and I did a really bad job at it. This time, however, Darius Modesto, the superintendent, is here. <laughs> All right, so for those who don't really understand how a regional system works, imagine a region is another town. Okay, so we have our own budget at the end of our, our fiscal year, we have reserves, which we call um, E and D existing deficiency. You guys call it free cash as a town. Currently, you know, we can carry up to 5% of our budget in E&D. Um, anything other over that, we have to give back to the town. Um, so right now, we have a couple capital projects that are coming down the, the pipe. Um, Frontier Regional is around 25 years old, which means a roof is going to be coming up in the, in the near future. Um, right now, we are doing part of a roof project using uh, school choice funds um, to offset that. But as we look further on down the road, it's going to be a five, five to $8 million dollar and the idea is if we're right now looking at doing it in sections, and we don't have a way to save money from one budget year to the next. Um, we can put it in a school choice account, but then that's going to get pulled away at the next the next need. If we had a, you know, whatever the whatever the hottest item on the stove is, might get pulled that money. We're not going to be transparently saving for certain projects, and that's why we want to create this capital account. And how will money go into it? That's going to be up to the school committee. Will they use a certain amount of their E&D and put into it? Will they use some school choice to put into it? Um, and then they can save portions of that. Um, when, the, when the roof does come on, I don't believe this account is going to pay, because you're not going to be able to save that much money. Um, but you will be able to offset some of those, um, some of those costs by doing some savings. So it, it does create transparency when you have accounts that says, we're saving for this project, rather than, hey, let's just continue to save in this, in this other lump sum. So that's, that's the reason for this account. Um, I know at the last meeting, because Phil filled me in, sorry I wasn't there, I was coaching for a basketball game. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was like, you could put how many millions into it? Yes, we could put millions and millions and millions. And if we have that problem, you guys can call me out on that. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. This is a two-thirds vote, by the way. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion's passed. 159 to 3. Mary McClintock. Howdy. I'm Mary McClintock. I live right down there. Um, I like this idea better. Um, although it's actually asking Jimmy for something. Jimmy, what, some, I don't know, maybe it's my brain is going, but when we have a bunch of discussion and then you say let's vote, I sort of forget what we're voting on. Okay. So could you just summarize when it before the let's vote, could you just say, okay, now it's time to vote on question number 12 sure. and a yes vote means this and a no vote means that. Sure. That would be really helpful. Thank okay. you. Okay. After article five. After article five. Okay, article, article five. I move that the town vote to transfer $10,000 from free cash to pay for a state fire marshal approved stage curtain for the Conway Grammar School stage. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, we're now going to vote on $10,000 on Article 
five. Oh. Uh, Pamela Gilmore, 194 River Road. I used to purvey uh, fire retardant materials for, for stages. And that seems like an exorbitant amount of money. I've, uh, I've purchased uh, from Rose Brand Company, which was at one point the only national uh, company, far more expensive curtains than this for a fraction of that price. So I'm wondering if this has been put out to bid at all, or what the justification for that expense is. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate the hustle. So, uh, yeah, anything over ten thousand dollars, we'd have to get three quotes on under common business. However, it will be less than ten thousand dollars. That's probably the maximum um, right now. I was just talking with Shelly Crater, our business director, is back there with me. Um, she said you know, we based the cost off of Frontiers curtain that was about a few years ago, being about half the size of what Frontiers was. So we think it's probably. She's looking it up now. Did you get a number? No. All right. So, but we do believe this to be less than ten thousand dollars. We will get the most affordable curtain possible. We're not going to be spending up. Um, but we did lose the curtain because we weren't able to prove that it was. Um, it didn't pass past the fire uh, fire retardant test. Thanks, Darius. You want to add anything to that? Okay. Any other discussion on Article Five? Let's vote. We're voting on $10,000, up to $10,000 for the curtain. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Article five passes 148 to 13. May I ask a question? Joe Strowski, uh, I walked in late, and I heard Mary make a motion to move the question, which is to end the debate. So did we vote on ending the debate, or did we vote on 2A? I think we needed two votes, but I may have missed something. Did you recognize her? Mary got up, and I, when I walked in, Mary said, move the question, after, no. I guess, an hour of debate. I think that what I believe he's correct. That was Matt Boyden, by the way. Okay, this is a uh, request from the select board. They're asking if someone could make a motion to move Article 29A up to the next discussion. 29A, for anybody who's wondering, is to see if the town will vote to appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund with each item considered a separate appropriation or take any other action relative thereto. Part A of Article 29 is $17,000 to the Frontier Regional School Committee for the reconstruction of Frontier Regional tennis courts, including lining for Picketball courts for school and community use from the Open Space Recreation Account Fund. Part B of Article 29 is $45,000 to the Town of Conway Select Board to provide a match for a $450,000 Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mun yeah, it's, it's, it's just 29A. Uh, it's just 29A, okay. So, Yeah. So the, the, re the reasoning for this is because in Article 2, um, Chapter C, we stripped out the funding for the tennis courts that were listed in 
uh, item 310C because it's being paid for, hopefully, in 29A. Uh, and while we still have the school personnel here to discuss this further, um, <clears throat> we moving this up, we seek to moving this up. Okay, we have a motion and second to move this forward in the warrant. Any discussion? Yes, please. Hi, Marcel Morgan, uh, Old, Cricket Hill, Old Cricket Hill Road. And I'm just curious how many um, courts that would be be creating if it's lying. Oh, this sorry. is just the motion to move. This is just the motion to move, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna vote on the motion to move it up first. Okay, are we clear that we're voting on a motion to move this question up 29A to now? Okay. Let's vote on that then. Five seconds. Voting's closed. The motion to move 29A up to now passes 148 to four. Okay. So, so Article 20. 129A. I move that the town vote to appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund with each item considered a separate appropriation. A, $16,463 to the Frontier Regional School Committee for the reconstruction of Frontier Regional Tennis Courts, including the lining for pickleball courts for school and community use from the Open Space Recreation Account Fund. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Yes, please. Uh, sorry about that. So, um, yes, I'm curious how many courts that would be provided. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just reconstructing the current courts. So there's currently four uh, tennis courts and, you know, and two, two pickleball courts per court, so you can do them out there. Um, and right now, you're, we are taking $100,000, asking that from the towns, um, and we asked to try to go through CPA to get it off your free cash. And the other, um, just over $200,000 is coming out of school choice. So we have built up that account over the last few years during COVID, um, and so now we're trying to take care of some capital projects without going to the town on that. But we needed just a little bit more, so that's why we're doing $100,000 assessing the four towns. And, you're, and that's your percentage of it. <laughs> Cindy Wimatt, Parsons Hill Drive. Um, so, community use. Is this something that's going to be a lock situation? How does the community sign up for this? And how do we know that it's community use? Do we have to go to the frontier side? Is it on the town side? Is there a big sign out there? So I get there and it's closed, or I get there and it's open? Could you explain that? Uh, the tennis courts are open to community use. We don't lock them, um, and so they're they're, they're, be, they're allowed to be used outside of school hours or when the varsity tennis court team is not on. Them. So you know, anytime outside of the after school in the spring season, it's tennis season. Outside of that, the tennis courts are regularly used by the community. So any weekend, you're welcome to go down, um, and it's first come first serve basis. Tim Morgan, 104 Old Cricket Hill Road. Um, my question has to do with um, the use of CPA funds, which I understand is for um, maintaining the quality, of the qualities of the town, the, the rural qualities of the town, and its open space and its historic stuff and things like that. And I just don't see how pickleball courts in Deerfield are the best use for our, our funds we've set aside to maintain the nature of our town. Uh, it, it, okay, recreation. Um, but um, it just seems like I feel like as a town, 
uh, those monies, it's almost like it's turning us into a country club rather than a town. It's like, I don't think that's our job. And I don't think that's what those funds are set aside for. Anyway, that's my thought. So behind you is the new chair of the Thank you. CPC committee, Jocelyn Forbes. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, so just to respond to that question, sorry, Jocelyn Forbush. I'm on Main Pond Road and chair of the Community Preservation Committee. Just want to clarify that the use of community preservation funds includes recreation, also includes affordable housing, includes conservation. What am I missing, Janet? Historic, Historic preservation. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, so this is in, this is a legal use of the funds and also one of the intentions and one of the reasons that this town passed the Community Preservation Act twice um, was to invest in the recreation and that's a broad definition. Um, Lori Block, Baptist Hill Road. Um, could you explain the budget of the CPA fund though? According here, it says the remainder to the CP, the Community Preservation Budgeted oh, Reserve is 61,750 estimated. Is that existing or coming in? And po is point of order, Lori. Point of order. That's not currently before. We're only doing 29A right now. But you're asked. But in order for me to understand the A line item, I don't understand where the A line item exists inside the total. Uh, estimated revenue and existing fund of the CPA. Yeah, thank you. And I did not bring those numbers up here with me. Um, I don't know if Lee has a recollection of that levy, annual levy. It is a significant amount, right? We're over a million dollars in our Community Preservation Act fund that is sitting in a pool. Uh, accessible for projects or annual levy, I believe, is it so for a hundred thousand. Do I have that wrong? Is that just about a hundred thousand annually? So those projects, <coughs> excuse me, are eligible. Do you, it's a ten percent has to go to conservation. Um, ten percent has to go to recreation. Ten percent needs to go to affordable housing. If there are not specific projects on the table here at town meeting for those areas in a given year, they go to funds. You'll you see that referenced in each of the line items. Where's the project coming from? So is it coming from the conservation slash open space fund? So these, these funds are allocated each year into these pools so that in future years, we have funds available for those three areas and we're following the letter of the law of the act. like this that are 
associated with schools, right? Because they're thinking the school budget would pay for this. In this case, because there is community use, as described, we can go outside of tennis season, go on weekends, first come, first serve. The public can use these courts. Um, the feeling was that this is a very appropriate use of those funds. Bob Armstrong. So we're looking at two questions. One is, should we spend CPA money on these courts? And then, should we fix the courts? And so I want to speak to whether we should fix the courts. And what I can say is that Frontier is doing an incredible job updating some old and decaying stuff in the school. And they're they're working with the select boards of all four towns to try to find a way that doing this does not cost us a lot of money. And Conway, for us, we're looking at $16,000, but for Deerfield, they're looking at fifty or $60,000. You know, and, and all of our towns are, are, are getting together and discussing how can we, how can we find this money. And, and one of the places we have money is in the CPA funds. Now, if you want to see the kind of work that, that Frontier is doing, go look at the new track. The Conway, the Frontier track was in such a poor state that other schools wouldn't come and run track meets on it. And a couple years ago, they redid the track, and it is beautiful. And if you, and, and yeah, they did it, they did it for cheap. Uh, it's a shame that we all can't take a trip down there and look at these tennis courts. You would not want to play tennis on these courts. You would not want your kids to play tennis on these courts. And I suspect the other schools don't want to have away meets at Frontier on these courts. They are really have gotten into bad shape. We all don't want to spend money every year. The school postpones doing these kinds of repairs. But we have, what, a million dollars in our CPA reserve funds. And this is a way that this much needed work can get done and not cost us anything. Thank you. I'm glad you said it. Okay, we're gonna vote. Oh, we, we have a motion to move the, move the question and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we are now going to vote on Article 29A, and that's $17,000 Frontier Regional School for the reconstruction of tennis courts, including pickleball courts. Actually, it's 16,463. Okay. Everybody clear? Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting's closed. 29A passes 142 to 17. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of people sitting on metal chairs who look uncomfortable, so I'm going to ask you all at this time to stand up. We're going to take a little break and stand up, and at that time, I'm gonna ask our state representative, Natalie Blay, and Peter Jeswald to come up here. Hello, everybody. Town of Conway. Hello, everybody. Hello, Bob Armstrong. Hi, everybody. I'm State Representative Natalie Blay. Thank you. Wow. That's a great welcome. First of all, um, I just wanted, so I'm State Representative Natalie Blay. I represent the town of Conway. I represent uh, 18 communities here in Franklin County. And I just want to take a minute to say 
thank you so very much for coming out today. I was in awe of the number of Conway residents who took the time out of their Saturday to show up and participate in the democratic process. So first of all, I wanna give a big cheers to the residents of Town of Conway for being here today. This is really important. It's important work as you consider your town's future. So um, I just really want to commend you for being here today. Uh, now I'm going to do something that makes uh, that could make somebody very uncomfortable, and he may hate me forever. Um, I'm going to invite Chief Wamet up to the front of the room. <laughs> That standing ovation is certainly uh, deserved, well-deserved. Uh, I have had the honor of working alongside Chief Wimet since I was first elected. And certainly prior to being elected, uh, Chief Wimet was a tremendous advocate, not only for this town, but for small police departments across the entire Commonwealth. Uh, I was lucky enough to go through the gun safety training my entire family did with Chief Wimet. Uh, and I just am so grateful for the service that he has provided to the town of Conway, to Western Massachusetts, and really all of Massachusetts. So I'm here today on behalf of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, Senator Paul Mark could not be here, but he also sends his best wishes. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts legislature offers its sincerest congratulations to Ken Wimet in recognition of over 40 years of service to the town of Conway, including 32 years as police chief. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. And this is signed by the Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, the Senate President, Karen Spilka, myself, Natalie Blay, and Senator Paul Mark. And on behalf of the entire town of Conway, we have for our soon. Phil, I was going to give you this one. <laughs> uh, this one's this one says retired on it though, and it's shinier. Don't give it to her, she'll watch her. <laughs> um, so this is gold chief police Conway retired badge to our dearly beloved, soon to be retired, Chief Kenny Wimet. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Phil. Uh, it's actually 33 years, but who's counting? <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh -huh. It's been a good run. <clears throat> I want to thank the entire town for their support over the years. Um, I'm really happy with, uh, to work with so many of you with the programs that we've done uh, especially the youth programs, Jimmy, and so many other, the Conway Sportsman's Club. Um, I want to thank all the officers that have worked with me over the years. Uh, the RAD programs that we did together, they were, I think they were very helpful to a lot of people, a lot of young ladies and older women throughout the entire county as far as Belchertown we went. <coughs> Uh, I guess most of all, I'd like to thank my wife. <laughs> it's uh, anybody who's in this line of work, I got to tell you, you never know when the phone's going to ring. You never know when you're going to be called away from your family. And uh, it's been tough, but uh, it's been fun and it's been rewarding. So thank you all.
Thank you. I would be remiss if I didn't take this moment to introduce a longtime fellow officer and my replacement. Don, Sergeant Don Bates from the town of Whaley, would you please come up? You didn't have to do this. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Uh, it's, been, it's, it's a pleasure to have Donnie as my replacement. Uh, I've got total faith in him. He's been with us for, I think, 15 years probably. We've worked together, um, teaching classes together over the years. I uh, full confidence, and Donnie, you want to say anything? I really wasn't prepared for this. Um, <laughs> probably more of a shock than it was for Ken. Um, so I just I look forward to being your police chief moving forward, and if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. I will try to be open and available. I don't know what that's going to look like in July, but we will start July. I will do some office hours during the day, some in the evening, and if you just want to stop by, say hello, introduce yourself, that'd be great, um, and you guys will get to know me, and I'll be around town a lot. So, thank you. I'd also like to ask the members of the Highway Facility Committee to step forward, please. That would be Walter Goodrich, Liv, Liv Wyatt, if you're here, uh, Peter Jaswald, Ron Sweet, Hank Horseman, if you're here, and Ken Wimette. So um, this is this is a committee that is now the highway, the, the um, working on the public safety building, but this is in recognition of the incredible work that they did on the highway facility and storage buildings. They have single-handedly saved this town hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it is making the uh, the public safety building project possible without asking for additional tax monies. Um, so it's sort of heroic work, for real. And for that, we made plaques for them all. <laughs> uh, and uh, so thank you, one and all. Excellent work. And <laughs> Walter, that's the Walker, Peter, this is yours. That's Walker. Uh, where's Walker? Uh, Article 6. Okay. Article 6. I move. Oh, hold on. Let me explain it. All right. To see if the town will vote to appropriate 311000 to construct an addition on addition to the public safety building and to meet said appropriation, the town shall transfer $311,000 from the Highway Maintenance Building Special Article, account number 1422-5851, to a public safety building addition fund or take any action relative thereto. 
I move that the town vote to transfer $311,000 to construct an addition to the public safety building. And to meet said appropriation, the town shall transfer $311,000 from the Highway Maintenance Building Special Article Account Number 001-422-5851 to a Public Safety Building Addition Fund. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Explanation. Um, so this this is money that was saved through the extraordinary efforts and really good work of the committee. Um, and uh, we could talk about that, seriously the amount of work that they did. We could talk about that for hours. But um, they this money is already baked into all the town's finances. So, so this does not add to our assessments in any way. And this will allow us, in, in, in conjunction with the select board decision, to spend the entire remaining ARPA monies of $400,000. This will allow us to do the public safety building. And everybody knows that building, right? It's across from OESCO on 116. It has long been referred to as the town eyesore. Uh, and this, it, it's badly in need of an upgrade. And it... Uh, it, it, and this is this is this is necessary work, and we figured out a way to do it without having to pay extra for it. So that's what this is all about. This is police, fire, and ambulance. Mary McClintock. Um, it says in the motion to. Uh, in number six, it says, to a public safety building addition fund. Does that fund already exist, or do we have to first create it and then put it in there? Yeah. Sorry, I keep forgetting to do this. Veronique Blanchard, 86 River Street. Um, no, it does not already exist, but um, this is actually not a special fund in the sense of like a special revenue fund. Where these funds are right now is actually um, in the general fund under the highway budget. So we're just transferring from a general fund to a general fund. We need approval, but there's nothing else special that needs to happen for this fund. Does, it, does that make sense? Okay. part of the committee who is designing this. If people would want, I could give a little more explanation about what's going on into it. So the current building, which is five bays, will, uh, will provide three bays exclusively for the fire trucks. The fourth bay will be for the fire, uh, the ambulance. Um, and the fifth bay will be for the police. And, um, and as a part of that, we will, uh, remodel the floor, we'll redo the floor, and put out a 32 by 48 square foot addition onto the building to the parking lot side. Um, there'll be a office for the incoming police chief. There'll be an office for the, the fire captain and the fire department and an office for the ambulance. There'll be a conference room, there'll be showers and uh, laundry facilities so that when the fire department comes back from Hall, they can get cleaned up, um, and um, I think that's about it that's going into it. It'll be one story matching the pitch, the un unequal pitch of the existing building. We've hired the engineer and the official designer to work up the plans and specifications just like we did for the highway department building, and, um, and then we will create a number of parking spaces. We're gonna, we're gonna reclaim <coughs> the edges of the par existing parking lot, doing plantings, hopefully butterfly and pollinator friendly plantings around the edge. So we'll be improving the space, uh, adding some green space to it. There'll be a new septic system uh, associated with the building. And um, I think that's it. If anybody has any other questions. I'm sorry? Time frame. Time frame. Uh, I just wanted to mention that the um, that the public buildings um, public forum video is up on the website. So if anybody wants to actually see the design, see and go through it all, it's already posted on the website for everybody. Okay. 
Any other discussion? <laughs> Any other discussion? Article 6. All right, let's vote on Article 6. That will move $311,000 from one general fund to another. Voting now open. Five seconds. This is from the old cell, the old grammar school, right? Voting is closed. Don't really know. I believe so, though. Motion passes 151 to 3. Article 7, to see if the town will vote to transfer $84,695.07 from the sale of real estate special revenue fund number 282 to the public safety building addition fund or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer $84,695.07 from the sale of, the re of real estate special revenue fund number 282 to the public safety building addition fund. Second. We have an motion and a second. Discussion? So this, this is the last piece of the puzzle for the financing of the public safety building. This sale of special, this real estate special revenue fund. This is the last remnants of the monies that the town received for the sale of the old grammar school in the middle of the town. And we have attempted to spend that on numerous occasions in the past. It's been approved to be spent, but the things that it got approved for always fell through. So the money still exists. This is old money uh, and uh, like 20, 30 years old money. and. We're putting it to the use that it was originally intended for to redo a building. So, Mary? I, I, when I saw this, I appreciate the explanation because when I saw this, I wanted to clarify with the select board in the town about um, sale of real estate because real estate funds. Because if you're aware that in recent um, weeks, the Sup U.S. Supreme Court has passed, uh, has, has made a decision saying that it is not legal, it is not constitutional for towns or cities to do something called equity theft. So if somebody, if a property gets taken for t back taxes, say you owe $20,000 of taxes on your property and you haven't paid it, you haven't paid it, and you haven't paid it, and you haven't paid it, and finally they take the property to auction and they sell the property and they get 100,000 for it, um, instead of the town getting 20,000 to pay the back taxes and the landowner getting 80,000 of the extra money, it is legal in the state of Massachusetts to, for the town to get all 100,000. This is called home equity theft. Um, there's been a whole movement to try and change this. I don't know what the state is, is in Conway with this, with tax takings. Um, literally in the last couple of weeks, the U.S. Constitution, the U.S. Um, Supreme Court has says it's not constitutional. It still has to get worked out in state law what's going to happen. But I am hoping that I just, when I saw the thing about sale of real estate, it made me nervous. So thank you for letting us know it's about the school. And I hope that, I would hope that the select board will make sure that if there is some really unfortunate situation where the town has no choice but to do a, taking a tax taking that the landowner gets all of the equity that isn't owed to the town. That's just Any other discussion? Article 7. One at a time. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Doug. I'd just like to reassure you that tax takings, any tax takings in recent years, have been for properties where the owner had passed away or had abandoned the property, and therefore taxes were not being paid. 
And uh, after a number of years of trying to work out the tax situation, the tax collector has proceeded with the um, taking process. The right to auction the property is, get, is given through a process to the collector, who then can auction it off, and money goes, that money goes into this fund. Clarification, uh, particularly I guess on Article 6, it says the money is to construct an addition. I assume this also includes renovation of the existing building, and it's not specific to the addition only? Actually, um, I, I, I will be corrected by our accountant if I'm incorrect, but my understanding is that the proceeds from the sale of real estate cannot be used for renovation. I think it's really for new construction, but I could be mistaken about that. No, no. All the funds that are being requested are for both the addition and also um, some of the renovations on the older building. Yeah. Any other discussion? Article 7. Seeing none, let's vote on Article 7. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 7 passes 150 to 4. Article 8. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide $100,000 for the fire truck stabilization fund as follows. Fire department, 100000 to save for a new rescue pumper to be purchased in 2028 or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer $100,000 from free cash into the fire truck stabilization fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing no discussion, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 135 to 16. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we move articles 11 and 12 before Articles 9 and 10. Could you identify yourself? I'm sorry, uh, Jared Campbell, Shelburne Falls Road. Uh, with the purpose of potentially, depending the outcome of those decisions, the funding of Articles 9 and 10 might impact the funding decision. Okay, so the motion is what? To move Articles 11 and 12 up to current prior to Articles 9 and 10. Okay, I have a motion on the floor to move Articles 11 and 12 up. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Okay, this is a vote. This is a vote to move questions 11 and 12 up to be the next two we deal with. All in favor? All right, let's, let's, let's. Hold on. Let's vote. Five 
Five seconds. Voting's closed. That motion passes to move the questions up 104 to 40. Okay. I guess we. Yes. Peter, Peter Jeswald, Old Crooked Hill Road. I thought before we started discussing the highway department uh, articles, it clearly it's going to generate a lot of emotion and a lot of discussion. We keep a couple things in mind. One, uh, I think we can all agree that highway superintendent is one of the most difficult jobs in the town to do. It's sometimes a thankless job. And I, in my opinion, we've been lucky and fortunate over the past 30 years to have two excellent highway superintendents, Bob Baker for 20 years and Ron Sweet, <coughs> Ron Sweet for the last 10. So I'd like you to keep that in mind, that it's a difficult job. Also keep in mind that the articles have been well vetted by the select board, by the finance committee, and by the capital improvement committee. So it's not a decision that people took lightly. They've a lot of discussion on it and been hashed over and over again, rehashed. And thirdly, because it's a uh, going to be an emotional, an, an emotional discussion. I would encourage people to come to the microphone, one person talking at a time, and be respectful when they're in the conversations. Thank you. Thank you for. <laughs> Thanks for stealing my thunder. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Article Eleven. To see if the town, uh, to see if the town will vote to transfer forty thousand dollars from the highway maintenance building special article, account number zero zero one four two two five eight five one, and authorize its use for the following capital items, or take any action relative thereto, forty thousand dollar for dollars for a used. 60 to 70 foot straight boom lift. I move that the town vote to transfer $40,000 from the highway maintenance building special article, account number 001-422-5851, and authorize its use for a used 60 to 70 foot straight boom lift. Second. I have motion and second. Any discussion? Please come to the microphone. Roger Gaucher, 52 Main Street, Conway. I request uh, an, an explanation <laughs> for its use. Okay. Do you want us to answer? Do you want us to respond to that? Sure. I'll have a go at it. How's that? I think it was about three or four years ago, Ron came to us and said he wanted a boom lift. And at that time, he thought he could buy this boom lift for about 20,000. And we had a big discussion just like this. And the town recognized that it was a good thing that he have, because prior to that time, when they had to work on trees, he, he raised his guys up within, with the, the bucket of a bucket truck holding their chainsaws and a couple guys wobbling in the bucket truck and tried to do tree maintenance. And it was terribly dangerous. And so he came to us and said, I have two choices. I can buy an old used one or I can rent one. And we looked at the numbers and the numbers are in your thing here. It won't take very many years to pay off the rent, the, 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 what we're gonna spend here today with a rental. Or he said, or I can rent one. And the town looked at that and they said, don't buy one. We think it's terribly dangerous. And we'll give you $10,000 this year to rent one instead of what you're asking for. And that's what he did. He rented one. And he's done that every year. The, the bucket truck has been safe. It's paid for by our town insurance. There's no insurance issues. Um, and I'm thrilled that 
he's not being forced to raise guys up in the bucket of one of his bucket trucks to try to do this work. And then he rents one. Now he rents one for a month at a time because it's a savings if he rents it for a month. And he usually doesn't need it for a month. But he tries to organize all the work he can get done with it. But now and then you might see it sitting down, you know, in the, in the South County, in, in, the, in the meadow, uh, unused. Uh, once again, we're looking at, do you want to spend some money and buy one and pay for it over a couple of years? Or do you want to keep renting it? He'll keep renting it. When he rents it, it's now in his operating cost. We won't, he won't be coming here to the town meeting every year begging for money. He really loves not coming here trying to beg for money to buy one. And, or, or we can buy one or he can continue renting it. It's completely up to you. When our capital equipment committee looked at it, we said it makes real economic sense not to, not to continue renting one and we should buy one. And so we, all, we, we as a committee supported it. I believe the select board supported it. But it's up to you guys. Well, I'll tell you what. I oh. First, identify yourself. I'm Dave Maslika from Shelburne Falls and Road. Please, please think about what you're going to say before you say it. That's all I ask. Well, I'm going to tell you something. They're high maintenance. We got, like I says, we got broken uh, grater in there. It's not being fixed. So he rents one. The man lifts, the boom lifts, they're high maintenance. It's better to rent one. You don't have to rent it for a month. You can rent it for two weeks. And it goes up to, he's saying now, five to six months a year. That's just jacking it up just so he could get one. What happened to the scissor lift he just bought? Where's that? Why do we need a scissor lift? That was a $6,000 item. I don't see it anywhere in here. So what like are we to, gonna do? I would like to remind everybody that we have select board meetings, we have finance committee meetings, we have capital improvement meetings that we encourage the public to come to where all of these issues have been discussed over and over and over again. If you feel that you have expertise or experience with these things and can offer that to the town, it is again encouraged that you do that. A reminder that this is a public service. We are not a business. It's like comparing the USPS to FedEx or UPS. USPS does not have a surplus every year. They have a deficit. That is because they are not a business. They are a public service. So please, as a reminder, our highway department is a public service, not a business. I've been in business, I know the business, and I'm telling you right now, this is high maintenance item just like that wood chipper. That wood chipper, every time it goes out, it's that. You can't fix this, what are you gonna do? Ship it out, use it once or twice and ship it out? The, the rental companies, no, listen to me. The rental companies rent it out, and every time it comes back, it's high maintenance. A lot of these items that he wants are high maintenance. Like I says, the stuff broken here that's not being fixed, not even brought up to being fixed. Sir, you keep bringing up the grader. That was my decision not to purchase a grader because it's $311,000. The rental for it is much cheaper. The life expectancy- Why don't you fix the one that's here? Sir, I'm telling you why we're not fixing it. If you look also, at the equipment on here, the boom lift and the chipper, I put a return on investment for both, showing the term of the use, the rental rates, what the rental rates are for, the purchase price, how long it would take for us to equal the purchase price based on the usage and the rental rate. As you will see for the boom lift, we would be able to pay for it in just over two years, where the life expense, the expectancy of it is 15 years. We all looked at this together as committees and thought, Okay, that makes sense. Why would we keep renting for such a long period of time when we can purchase, even with maintenance, it would be far cheaper than continuing the rental. You can see the same with the chipper. Really? Yes, sir. I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, any of you ever ran one? You know what, what it is? No, you don't. You, ha you guys ain't got a clue. And I'm gonna tell you something. They're high maintenance, 
And just like I says, you don't fix shit. Hold on. Uh, Hi, could, my name is Patrick. Could, could you wait a second, Patrick? Well, oh, well, I, would I just mean, I was in line here. Ron, but. Well, Ron would like to respond to the first gentleman. Uh, I, just, I, I, I think we're missing the point. Ron Sweet, Highway Superintendent. I don't know where they got the information that the grader is broken. I've been using it for the last two weeks. So I don't know where, you're, where you got that information. There is problems with the grader, but it's usable. The whole point of renting one was so that it took the lot, um, seriously? Um, <laughs> it took some of the pressure off the one we own. The problem being that I went to rent one this spring and there's none available. Um, and as far as the boom lift, this year we've rented it for four months out of this fiscal year, but normally it's three months, just that we've had done a lot more this year with trimming. Um, so I don't know where these numbers are coming from, but. Uh, my name is Patrick Lynch. I live on South Shirkshire Road. And I think maybe one of the issues here is not the cost of the equipment, but that we're using this equipment so much. Why the, the highway department is now doing massive amounts of tree work. We're trying to just maintain roads and plow roads. We don't need to do massive amounts of tree work. We don't need a boom lift to do that tree work. We don't need all this chipper and stuff. We need a month out of the year to clean some of this stuff up and not do massive amounts that of tree work. Fantastic question. Um, the grader, for example, I see that we grade our roads uh, pretty typically with a mini excavator and a skid steer, which goes up and down the road four times versus twice with a, with a grader. So I feel like we're spending a lot of money on mini equipment and all this equipment to do things that are typically and in the past done with simpler equipment and in simpler fashion. That's a great question. Uh, you want, yeah. I, can I just also say, there is an open seat on the Capital Improvement Committee. Um, those were great questions. <laughs> so, just with respect to the part of your question that dealt with why are we doing so much tree stuff? and. Um, for, for many, many years, this town was fortunate, um, or unfortunate, depending on how you view, view it, and uh, there's something called a shade tree commission law in this state. It's been in existence since the early 1960s, I think. We've never, as a town, really complied with it. Um, and uh, now we really are in the position where we really sort of have to comply with it. And what that really means, the, just from a broad perspective, is lots of trees that used to that we used to tell residents it was their responsibility to remove, are now actually the town's responsibility to remove. And um, and th that's just that's just how that law is. And um, that that and so that it, it is a requirement now for our highway department going forward that they have to be doing a lot more tree work than are, they ever did. Are they addressing past. individuals and, and property trees or just some that are on? I don't see anything being done in front of anybody's property. <laughs> so, <laughs> you uh, know, so I mean, the massive project that was done on, on Waitley Road, of course, we've ignored this rule for 60 years, and we can obviously ignore this rule for 60 more years. Except so, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, well, how, how does it not work that way? We've done it for 60 years. <laughs> um, be because individual residents can take the town to court and they will win. Why are individual um, residents doing that? <laughs> be be because there are some people that think it's important that the town comply with the laws. And I, um, <laughs> uh, so, so, but, but the, uh, you know, it, it, it would be great if we great if the town didn't have to comply with this, but the town does. It's just we, we, we as an option as, to be responsible. Um, I think it needs to be done in a fairer manner than maybe, you know. Uh, Troy Lucier, uh, Old Cricket Hill Road. Uh, in the past year and a half, or almost two years, there have been people going to the select board meetings, and they have been complaining about trees. 
falling on Old Rawlingbrook Road, Shelvin Falls Road, uh, Conway Road, uh, just basically wanting the town to clean it up. But when the town does try to clean it up, everybody's bitching that the money's being spent. Oh, excuse me. So <laughs> let's not take it out on the town uh, highway garage um, when it's actually the residents that are really beginning to complain about it. Okay, we have a motion and second to move the question. Let's do a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Ayes have it. Clearly. Now we're going to vote on Article 11, just to remind everybody what it's about, to spend $40,000 for a used 60 to 70 foot straight boom lift. Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 11 passes 87 to 60. Article 12. To see if the town will vote to transfer 99 thousand dollars from the highway maintenance building special article account number double zero one dash four two two dash five eight five one and authorize its use for the following capital items or take any action relative thereto ninety two thousand dollars for an 18 inch chipper with a winch and seven thousand dollars for a chipper box <laughs> I, I move that the town vote to transfer $99,000 from the Highway Maintenance Building Special Article, account number 001-422-5851, for an 18-inch chipper with winch and a chipper box. I have a motion in multiple seconds <laughs> on Article 12. Discussion? Elizabeth Potter, Roaring Brook Road. Um, just a little bit of history. This was voted down at the 1222 meeting, and I make a motion to table this because DCR has approached the town and is in the process of exploring Conway, set up a wood bank, and there's incentives for it. And I hate to see usable, good usable wood be chipped, uh, especially with the cost of fuel and other heating sources. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So um, we did. We are looking into developing our own wood bank. Just so everybody knows, the type of wood that you would have at a wood bank is not the type of wood that this chipper is going to be used for. The chipper is used for wood on dead or diseased trees, limbs that have fallen. Um, not for good hardwood. So there is a difference. At these wood banks, you're going to want non-diseased, non-dead hardwood, not wet pine or diseased trees or fallen trees um, that have been, you know, soaked in the ground for a long time. So there is a difference between the wood that you would use for a wood bank and a wood chipper. Jimmy? Bob Armstrong. Perhaps a point of order, but so we had, we had a fairly ugly discussion in the town meeting a number of years ago where somebody gave a long talk and then they said, and so I make a move that we table the article. And, 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 and it passed. And then afterward, the then moderator, it wasn't Jimmy, 
realized that was a major mistake, that it is against Robert's rules of order and the other popularly accepted town's rules of order to allow somebody to give a discussion and then say, and I make a motion that we table it. So the table has to be a separate item, and I don't think we should vote on it. I appreciate you gave some discussion, but uh, it was an inappropriate time to make a motion to table the article. David Potter, Roaring Brook Road. You didn't answer a question. We just voted this down six months ago. I mean, wh why is it brought back up? Nothing's changed in six months. Why is it, why is it on the article? So again, uh, we're bringing up the shade tree law. Uh, there was a lot of research that had to be done, a lot of back and forth council between you know, the committees to understand what our responsibilities are. Um, it is our responsibility as a town to take care of these trees. Um, again, at the last year's meeting, uh, there were some questions on this. The wood bank did come up. Everybody thought that was a great idea until we found out, again, it's not the same type of wood that we'd, you, we would use um, with the chipper. Did you have anything to add to that? Veronique Blanchard. Um, the only thing I wanted to add to that is that um, this came up in December, yes. It came up because the town found out in the fall that we had to abide by this law that we had not been abiding by. So I will take this on myself that not enough time was spent educating all of Conway's residents about this new law and why it was we needed to have this new equipment. So we put it on last December because we knew we needed it, but we didn't actually spend the time to really make everybody understand why that had changed. Yeah, but, all right, big trees, okay? You're not gonna be able to feed these big trees through this chipper. I mean, you're still gonna have to remove them. So I, I, just, don't, I just don't see where, where this is at. I, again, we went through this and we discussed this last time, and that was brought up and we voted it down by, by a big majority, and now we're dealing with it all over again. I just, I don't understand. Uh, Jared Kempel, Shelburne Falls Road. Um, I just, I know, I, I acknowledge the sarcastic remark that I could be on the committee if I wanted to as well, or I could join all these meetings. I am on the school committee, I do have four kids, I coach a whole bunch of every team in town, so I can't be on every committee and make every meeting. But if I look at this, where's, is there a maintenance cost assumed in this? You know, I'm looking at the equipment request and put together by the Capital Improvements Committee. Um, is there a maintenance on that ROI? Like, uh, just, to, just to tell you, it wasn't sarcastic. I'm being honest. We really do need another person, and especially with, if anybody has expertise. Um, we're always looking for more members of, uh, of our public to help um, and volunteer their time. Uh, planning board, I believe we still have two open seats, right? Okay. One open seat. Point is, I don't know if that is included in the assessment, right, by the finance people. My stance is we can continue renting. It's in the budget to rent. I, I, a, I also want to acknowledge I fully appreciate everything the highway department does for us. I appreciate everything we do. I support them. I would like to support them via a rental budget in this case, opposed to a capital expense of $100,000 from a fund that we over budgeted um, the building over the garage. Um, again, the decision really came back to, uh, it, it, it's not if we should do the work or not. We know we have to do the work. It's about how we fund that work. Either we continue to uh, use our operating expense funds to rent a chipper, um, knowing that the rental rates for chippers have increased and will continue to increase. We expect them to continue to increase. Or to um, purchase uh, so we don't have to rent, so we don't have to travel to pick one up, drop it off, you know, spend time in operations again to do that. Um, so again, I, I put on here the uh, ROI on what you can see. So the decision 
for us to move forward with the purchase was based on that um, where we should spend our money. The, the maintenance of, well, no, because the, the chipper is a rental. Is a rental, right? The current, are you asking about the The maintenance of a new chipper? No, that's not included on here. This is just for the purchase. We don't, we can't, we can't assume the maintenance. Elizabeth Potter, this was also brought up at the December meeting. Um, almost every landscaper scaper that we see, and um, even the town using the rental chipper, has been chipping it into the back of a truck. I don't see any reason we should have merged the chipper box with the um, chipper. If we are going to vote for the chipper, maybe we can save $2,000 by continuing to chip it into a truck. Ron, I believe you can speak to that, but that is, if we got the chipper box, we wouldn't have to, um, there are hours spent removing um, the chipper from the truck, isn't that correct, Ron? Yes. I'm Nelson Chifflett, I'm from Shelburne Falls Road. Um, I believe the protocol in the past has been that people raise their hands and then get recognized before they speak, as opposed to just getting in line. I think we should probably return to that. Um, it would improve the, the meeting, I think. With regards to the chipper, I voted against this at the last meeting. My thinking has changed. I saw how much damage was done during this past storm. Um, and I saw the guys out working on the side of the road and I felt, I feel it is a good expenditure of money as opposed to renting. Um, and I think, but it would, I would be more in favor of it if we could establish a bank where the wood chips would be available to the public. Just like there's discussion now for a, a wood bank for firewood. If there's a place that they could be stored on town property so that they'd be accessible to the public, I wouldn't have to go out and buy a truckload of chips for my gardens. Okay. Bob Armstrong. I'm sorry I'm standing up so much, but it's hard for me not to want to defend Ron, and we kind of promised him we wouldn't make him stand up and do a lot of talk in a town meeting. Uh, so there's a, and I hear criticism about Ron and maintenance. Now, if we order this chipper today, it's going to take over a year to get it. And right now, Ron has found a really great source of, I'll call it, renting a chipper, and we pay rental on a chipper, but it's a private company that has a spare chipper. And they keep it for when one of their chippers is down. And they let us store it here in Conway. And Ron is free to use it when he needs it. And we can call, and he pays, we pay for that. And it's a little bit less than what we have here. And he does all the maintenance on that chipper. And the guy who ha owns the chipper is happy to have this deal with Conway because of the quality of Ron's maintenance. So, uh, you know, I don't have a number for the dollars for maintenance, but I know that, that his guys know how to do it, and they maintain this chipper, and it sits here in Conway, and he has some free use of it, and it can end at any moment. It's, you know, over the next year, it could easily end, and we're going to have to start renting the chipper. So, so our hope is that we can order this chipper, we won't get it for a year, and that we can continue this deal for the next year at a really great rate and continue to save the money town, uh, the, save the town some money. Thank you. Okay, this is the sticky part for me. I, in, in your first talk, Betsy, you, you made a motion. I never heard a second on a motion. The motion table. to table? I second the motion. Well, it, no, it, in not hearing that, it's not a motion. If I, you know, when you said that, so I'm just letting you know that, that the, and clearing everything up, we are voting on Article 12. Okay. We're, we're, we're voting to move on question 12. So we can do that. Let's do that vo vocally. Everybody in favor of moving the question? Yes. 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 Aye. Aye. Opposed? Wow. 
Okay. We are going to vote on Article 12, which is 92,000 for a chipper, 7,000 for a chipper box. Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 12 passes 91 to 60. Now we go on. Fike, uh, Shelburne Falls Road, to the person who said he'd like to know where the wood chips are. I don't know which road they are. Um, it's, it's not actually. I, oh, I, okay. I was mistaken. I, I gave you bad info. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Article 9. To see if the town will vote to transfer $70,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the purchase of a side entry exit rubber tire compact loader or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer $70,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the purchase of a side entry exit Rubber tire compact loader. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Uh, what, what's the rubber tire loader being used for that we don't have other equipment for? What, can somebody explain what the uh, rubber tire loader is and what, what we need it for? Ron Sweet. The rubber tired loader that is to replace the compact loader that we have now that's on tracks. The one we have now, we've had all kinds of problems basically from new with it. But um, we, the rubber tired one will give us more, um, more usability on it because the reason the tracks was um, The rubber tired loader will work better because of what we do for work. Um, the track loader in the beginning was bought with a different kind of understanding of how it was going to react to what we do. Um, but now the rubber tired will, is more usable for our situations. We have uh, several attachments, skid steer attachments. Um, we have a stump grinder. Uh, and those will all fit the new loader. They will all fit the new loader. And we're going to sell the old loader. Trade it in, yes. It, it, yeah, it's all it's all here. Uh, if if I may, Jimmy. I, I just wanted to point out that everybody should hopefully have they they did when we everybody came in on their seats the capital request which explains everything about the equipment that's being requested. Dave Potter, Roaring Brook Road. How many hours on that machine, Ron? About 1,200 hours. 1,200 hours. I mean, we buy stuff with less, I mean, with more hours than 1,200. Okay, I'm going to lay it out. I was the head of the Capital Finance Committee 10 years ago. Me, Ronald Boyden, Quentin Antes. We came up with a vehicle purchase, maintenance, replacement, program. It was a 10 to 15 year program. I don't know whatever happened to it. It's gone. I don't know. We had engineers put it together. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bunch of hillbillies putting it together. We had engineers put this together. And I come up, I work, uh, I work for other towns 
as their mechanic. They would buy that loader for 1,200 hours on it. I have a list, if anybody wants to see it, of other towns, the years and the mileage and the hours on the machines. And 1,200 hours, 1200 hours is ridiculous. Um, but again, I just want you to know that I spent a year putting together a replacement program. A year, three of us, okay? And it was a tough deal to do it. But again, I, I worked, I, I'm a fleet mechanic. I have been for 50 years. I, I, I was a mechanic for Eversource. I bought, did the purchasing of their vehicles. I maintained them, um, repaired them. Um, and I got the engineers behind me to do this. And, and we're, we're replacing vehicles at 1,200 hours. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Nobody does that. I just think, I just think, I think that we should table the whole thing. I really do. I, I mean, until we can find those replacement programs, maintenance, and there's a maintenance program that goes with them because you can't have a vehicle that you think you're going to replace in 10 years, and then if you don't, I'm not saying they don't maintain them. I don't know that, okay? But if you don't, it, they won't make the 10 years or 15 years. I'll give you an example. Eversource, their trucks, 15 years unlimited mileage. UPS, 15 years unlimited mileage. Now, we all know the way they drive those UPS trucks. They, they, they beat the crap out of them. They, they, I mean, we're, 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 we're replacing new stuff. And again, if it needs work, that, isn't that why we have a, a million dollar repair garage up there? I mean, it, we're, we're going in two different directions, people. It's what I know, it's what I've done all my life, and I'm telling you that it is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Ron Sweet. So just so everybody knows, yes, I know it's only got 1,200 hours on it, but pretty much right from day one, that machine, we've had so much problems. And as far as our point of view is when you're having problems with a piece of equipment, it takes time, it takes all kinds of money to fix things, and the biggest problem is that the machine isn't usable when you need it. And Unfortunately, this machine has been a problem. It's the only reason we're asking to replace it, and it's probably some of the reason why it's only got 1,200 hours on it. It's not because it's not something that it's, well, I'm not looking to replace it because it's, um, I want something new. It's because it's a problem for us. Right now, it has a problem when it's cold. You can't use it because you can't release the hydraulics on it. So, when I, and I haven't figured out the temperature range or whatever, but um, it, it, it's so frustrating when you go to do something and you can't use the piece of equipment, and that's why we're asking to replace it. Um, I would say uh, he might have said something really important, that there's only 1,200 miles on this piece of equipment. It's been 10 hours, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been 10 years, and they've only put 1,200 hours on this piece of equipment. Have we rented another piece of equipment that does this? Do we need this piece of equipment? Is this a necessary piece of equipment to do the job? Did we have this piece of equipment before that 10 years? I don't think, you know, I think that we're just throwing money at stuff, thinking that we're going to we're just keep doing more work. We're not going to get anywhere with it. We need to, you know, make a budget and stick to it and not continually spend on equipment that we're not using much, that we don't need, or that people aren't keeping up with, or that hasn't been useful for 10 years. I mean, that's something that should have come up way before this. <laughs> Lee Whitcomb, you were next. I have a three-part question. 
One, is this a new loader or a good use? Two, is there any warranty with it? And three, would the old uh, unit be sold or traded toward this? Oh, it does, okay. Okay, so I apologize, I didn't. This is a, a didn't new, have time to this read would be that. a new loader, sorry. Um, the the trade-in of the old loader is uh, approximately $21,000. Um, as we've stated, uh, there, this is multi-use, as you can see with all the attachments. It's used on almost a daily basis, or we should be using it on a daily basis, but like Ron said, it has so many issues that it typically sits in the garage, unfortunately, um, which is, you know, again, why we're asking um, for a replacement. Uh, Lee, I'm sorry, did, you ha did I answer all your questions? Oh, the warranty. Uh, yes, there is a one-year bumper-to-bumper and a five-year emission warranty. Thank you. David? Me again. Listen, you know, the, the thing is, is that I, I understand that when, when something, you know, breaks or, or isn't running right, it's a hassle. But again, we and everybody else, every other maintenance fleet and, and independent deal with it. You just don't buy new. I mean, that's the whole idea behind a maintenance garage. I mean, we have a garage, okay? Matter of fact, that garage is the best garage I've ever seen. I've been at it, like I say, for over 50 years. I've never seen, a, I mean, that, that garage is really something. But again, we're going in two different directions. We, we, wanna, we want new stuff, but yet we don't want to deal with, you know, repairing it. I don't understand, you know, we're going in, like I say, we got a rope, we're pulling in on both ends of the rope. So we, we have a lot of pieces of equipment, every single one needs repairing, um, every single one is being worked on, a lemon's a lemon, and uh, what we're looking at with loader is a lemon, unfortunately. I heard a motion and multiple seconds to move the question. So we're, I'm going to ask for a vo vo voice vote on moving the question. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Okay, we're going to vote on Article 9. That's $70,000 transferred from capital stabilization for the purchase of the compact loader. By the way, this is a two-thirds majority vote. Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Uh, article 12, Article 12, uh, Article nine. 9 does not pass. The vote was 72 yes, 70 no. And it's a two thirds vote. Article 10, to see if the town will vote to transfer $80,000 from the capital stabilization fund for the purchase of a plow truck, a one-ton four-door short bed six-cylinder diesel with a new V-plow or take any action relative thereto. Uh, because it's stabilization, once again, that is a two-thirds majority vote. I move that the town vote to transfer $80,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the purchase of a plow truck, a one-ton, four-door, short bed, six-cylinder, diesel, with a new V-plow. 
I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Peter. Uh, Peter Jeswell, Little Crooked Hill Road. David, I'm really glad you like our new town garage. I think it's one of the best around. The, what, the major reason why it is one of the best arounds and how much under budget did it come in? $400,000? $500,000 500, under budget was because of Ron's hard work, his connections, and his attention to detail. So I just wanted people to understand that Ron is a major mover in trying to save the town money. Thank you. I'm getting a, what, an explanation. Someone's asking for an explanation. Again, I'd refer to the handout <laughs> um, that we, we, we gave, um, as you'll see, Article 10 for the plow truck. Um, currently, the, uh, the main uh, passenger vehicle and plow truck we're using is at a, a, over 120,000 miles. Um, it's 10 years at this point. There are multiple issues uh, with the truck that lead to high repair repair and maintenance cost. Uh, the truck is used on a daily basis, again, um, for multiple things to include, uh, you know, passengers, um, the, the plow, um, you know, obviously getting uh, crews to uh, the workstations. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time trying to look at uh, used vehicles and Unfortunately, in today's climate, used vehicles were not um, financially viable for this. Um, so, you know, I know last year that we were we, we had uh, talked about the, the fire station truck, and at that time, it made sense to go used. This year, it does not, given the, the cost estimates and um, the type of truck that's necessary. Um, Again, this would be a, a, a truck that would be able to use all the attachments the current truck uses. Uh, so it would be like for like. Ladies and gentlemen, David Potter. Yeah, here I am again. It's the only thing I know and I do. And a lot of people here I work on their cars and tractors and stuff, okay? And again, I, I worked with engineers. 120,000 miles is nothing today, okay? And the other thing too is, again, the program was set up as a 10 to 12 year program. It doesn't even meet that at this point. And you know, the thing of it is, is I know Ron has done a great job on the building, you know, uh, you know building costs or whatever, but this is a different, story this is a different situation this is this is road this is equipment maintenance and equipment costs and equipment purchasing it's two separate things i am an expert anybody wants to see my my credentials i will be happy to provide them i am a expert and this is not the way it works some work that happened 10 years Microphone. ago. Thank you. All right, Phyllis Crane, Capital Improvements Committee. If there was some work done 10 years ago to address some of these issues, for me, a new resident of the town, that information has not been available to me. I don't know where it is. Perhaps you know where it is. I just found out where it is because the selectman, the selectman at the time was sitting behind me. She told me where it is. I know where, I know how to find it. Okay. It's good information. I wish we had had it in advance of this meeting, but we didn't. So all of, all of the information that we've presented to you is ge generally a good faith effort on the part of the Finance Committee, the Select Board, and Capital Improvements, as well as the Highway Department to make a genuine case for the need for this particular type of equipment. And as Bob said, it's really all of, uh, it's up to all of you to decide whether or not the, ca the town is going to make that commitment to it. Dave Potter. But see, 
it works for Ron, too. The program that we put together, instead of having him come up here and wanting a piece of equipment off the cuff that we all have to figure on, the maintenance program and replacement program, you know it's coming. Okay, I in other words, the, the maintenance thing, and then it's like, oh, uh, uh, oh it's oh, 12 years. You don't, you don't have to explain it to me. Okay. I know what they are, but it doesn't, it was not made available to the committee prior to town Okay, meeting. but again, I'm, I'm telling you now that, that maybe we should, maybe should, we should table this and, and get those records out and, and, and start putting this together. And then Ron wouldn't have to come up here and ask for this stuff. He'd, he'd hold up the sheet and go, okay, it's due, it's time for replacement, it's in black and white. See, I followed all the criteria, I followed the maintenance program, instead so of- So let me ask you this, if that information, can you get me that information? Can you personally get it to me and direct I me to could, it? You worked on it. Well, I know, but I, but I, was, at the, I was on the Capital Finance Committee, we did it, we passed it in, it went into the selectmen at the time, I, I was told, just told, that I that somebody knows where it is. So maybe I can get it. If not, maybe I could redo it. It'd be tough, because I don't have the access to the engineers like I used to. But again, maybe I could do it. But it's easier for everybody. Okay. Ron Sweet. So to you, your point on the um, plan that you did, I don't know if I ever saw the whole thing. You didn't see it wrong. But the parts that I did see, all it was was parts taken out of the um, maintenance of the equipment, which is normal. It, I was told that that's what your committee came up with is, um, and we do follow, um, manufacturer's guidelines for maintenance. I mean, you have to understand that we, it's, to, we don't spend money shipping out stuff. Our new garage is awesome, but it takes time. We don't have qualified mechanics other than me on the thing, so it's my time. I do that so that I don't ship it out to have other town, uh, other so we don't have to pay money out of my budget, which gets eaten up on a lot of other things that I'm not capable or have the time to do. We do our, our maintenance is top notch for what we have for equipment. Um, it's a lot of equipment. It gets used a lot. Um, it's a difficult situation. I spend Saturdays, Sundays, fixing things so that we can, so the guys can work Monday, Tuesday. Uh, there's a lot of my time spent. This pickup, we just bought a fire truck that had, was, we replaced a 10 year old truck for a truck that gets used a thousand miles a year. And you guys were all willing to spend 50 grand for something that barely gets used. And when I asked for something, that is in dire need of being replaced. I'm sorry, it, it, this is getting very, very hard to take. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, so it's I, something I, that I spend a lot of time with this town. I, I like this town, or I did like this town. Uh, it's getting very frustrating that people think that the highway doesn't do anything, or we don't do anything right. And so, I'm sorry. So, so I will say this is a 10-year-old a, a vehicle, um, so we're on that line. Uh, what you have to do with vehicles like this is find the sweet spot of do you run the vehicle into the ground where it is worth nothing, and if you know it breaks down when you need that extra plow truck, or do you replace it when it still has some value? Um, I am an engineer. Uh, I'm from West Virginia, so I'm also a hillbilly. Best, best of both worlds there. Um, so, you know, I am familiar with, with, with this as well. Nelson Shiflett, and then you, Betsy. It seems unfortunate this argument has uh, 
degenerated to uh, uh, argument about personalities and issues and so on. Ron does a good job working for this town, and he does the best job that he's capable of doing. So with that, I would just say, with regards to this particular issue, I would just say there's not one of us here who would continue to drive a vehicle um, that has 120,000 miles on it, um, that requires $8,000 a year in maintenance costs. $24,000 over the last three years. It's a simple matter. Simple matter. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a motion to move the question out there. Multiple seconds. So where are we at? We're going to vote. We're going to vote to move the question. Okay, this vote is to move the question. So we're voting to decide to vote. Mm -hmm. Yep, this will be a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I think the ayes have it. So we are now voting on Article 10. It's $80,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for a purchase of a plow truck. Needs a two-thirds majority. Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Uh, Article 10 has failed. 89 yes, 50 no. Two abstentions. Article 13, to see if the town will vote to transfer $31,138 from the Ambulance Receipts Fund for a partial payment for Ambulance Department operation or operational expenses or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote $31,138 from the Ambulance Receipts Fund for a partial payment for Ambulance Department operational expenses. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, seeing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 121 to 1 with two abstentions. Article 14. To see, the t to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate tr appropriate Transfer from available funds or otherwise provide $65,270 to pay for the paving note for Shelburne Falls Road or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer $65,270 from free cash to pay for the paving note for Shelburne Falls Road. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mm 
Matt Boyden. Uh, Matt Boyden, uh, Boyden Road. Uh, I'd just like an explanation as to what this uh, note is, because I believe this same project was referenced in an uh, explanation of an increase to a debt service line item, and how the two uh, work together or don't. Singer, okay. Rolling Brook Road Finance Committee Chair. So we borrowed money to pave Shelburne Falls Road a little over a year ago, and what we did is to set up a, a fund we have a certain amount of interest that gets set aside every year, and every year what we do to pay the note and have a level amount from the, as a special money warrant, we have this figure here. So it's level funded for the next 10 years or so of the note. And a simple interest note, the interest rate is like over 4% fixed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We, we didn't have the money. And, and just to let you know that chapter 90 money is over the years, the economy have been cut. We did ask for cha more Chapter 90 money relief from the state, and uh, the answer is no. Any other discussion? Jesus. Okay, we're going to vote. This is for Shelburne Falls Road, paving money. Five seconds. Voting is closed. The motion passes 106 to 5 with one abstention. Article 15. We're moving. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide $9,600 to pay for bid phase services, construction phase services, and grant administration assistance for the Delabar Avenue Pre-Hazard Mitigation Grant Project, or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash or otherwise provide $9,600 to pay for bid phase services, construction phase services, and grant administration assistance for the Delabard Avenue Prehazard Mitigation Grant Project. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? So the, Explanation, uh, please. This is part of the, the Delabard Avenue Project is the town's attempt, was the town's attempt to work directly with the federal government in a grant project. This is Hurricane Irene damage, 2012. It happened after the trees came down and took down the slope. Yeah, re still related to that, but well, no. the, it, was the, it was afterwards when the trees came down and took down the slope. <laughs> um, but the... Uh, that because of the federal procurement laws, we cannot use, uh, we, we must pay directly these engineering services, the engineering firm for these services and not use the grant award, the FEMA grant award to pay for the services. So this is just one more complication of using federal procurement. Lee Whitcomb. Lee, Whit Lee Whitcomb, Ashfield Road. The way you read it, um, Phil, the source of the money was a little unclear. You said from free cash or other yeah, it should be just free cash. Other funds. Yeah, Which is it going to be? It um, it's just free cash. It is free cash. Okay, thank you. I heard a move the vote. Do I get a second? Okay, let's, let's vote on the move the vote. Voice? Aye. Opposed? Okay, let's vote.
Five seconds. Voting is closed. The question, uh, the uh, motion moved is so moved, 101 to four, one abstention. Article, Article 16, to see if the town will vote to authorize the following four-year 2024 expenditure limits for the Town of Conway Revolving Fund pursuant to Mass General Law, Section 40, uh, 44, Section 53 and a half, and the Town of Conway Bylaw up to $5,000 from the Medicaid Revolving Fund, up to $6,000 from the Dog Licenses Fund, up to $10,000 from the Newsletter Revolving Fund, and up to $20,000 from the Conway Youth Sports Program Revolving Fund, or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to authorize the following fiscal year 24 expenditure limits for the town of Conway revolving funds, up to $5,000 from the Medicaid revolving fund, up to $6,000 from the dog licenses fund, up to $10,000 from the newsletter revolving fund, and up to $20,000 from the Conway youth sports program revolving funds. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Last year, town meeting changed the bylaws to, for, to uh, outline certain revolving funds, their purposes, and set the limits, which may be expended from each revolving account. So now the town needs to approve this language annually for each of these revolving funds. Discussion? Hearing none. We're going to vote on Article 16 about the Conway, Town of Conway revolving funds. Let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 107 to 4 with no abstention. Article 17, to see if the town will vote pursuant to the provisions of General Law uh, 40, Section 5B, to create a new special purpose stabilization fund to be known as the o Opioid Settlement Stabilization Fund, which may be expanded for all of the purposes allowed by law, including those outlined in applicable Opioid litigation settlement documents, a document prepared by the Substance Abuse Bureau of the Commonwealth's Office of Health and Human Services Department, uh, found at www.massgov documents, Massachusetts abatement terms slash download entitled abatement strategies and consistent with any state guidelines or regulations further clarifying allowable uses of opioid litigation settlement funds and further to adopt the last paragraph of section 5B and dedicate to such fund without further appropriation 100% of the opioid litigation settlement funds received by the town and further to transfer from available funds a sum of money equal to that received or to be received by the town from opioid litigation settlements resulting from the town's participation in the national opioid, opioid multi-district litigation into said opioid settlement stabilization fund or take any other action related thereto. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Sí. This, by so, the way, is a, a two-thirds vote. So the motion's a lot easier. <laughs> I move Article 17 as printed in the warrant. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a motion and a second. Discussion? So, um, the explanation, first of all, I'd just like to give a shout out to our town administrator for being on top of these. So, the, you may have heard nationwide the opioid settlement, it's been in the news a lot. Um, many of these opioid settlements, it turns out the town of Conway is eligible for. Uh, they don't really make it easy to, first of all, find out about them all, and second of all, register for them all. Yeah, but, third of all, you have to read them all. And, um, and, and the way that these work, some, like, a, 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 they're, they're all little ones, but added up, they all add up. But they're, uh, you know, $3,000 paid to the town over 15 years kinds of things. So we need a special fund to collect all, to collect all these into. And this doesn't, this isn't about deciding what to do with them. That's a whole separate thing. This is just about making sure we can get paid. So. Discussion? Seeing none, see, 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 let's see, vote see, on see, Article yay. 17. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 17 is passed. 87 yes, two no, two abstentions. That would require a motion to consider. That would require a motion to consider. I will. We can deal with this in a couple different ways. We could. There could be a motion for a recess. We could. I'll go get something to eat for an hour or whatever and come back. Or somebody could motion to continue this to another day. So there are, those are all options. Those are our options unless, or you want to keep going. So. We have a motion and second on the floor to continue this to another date. Just sure. Um, having never done that before, I don't know, I, but I can say that I, I don't happen to know if FCAT is available. We haven't said when it would be continued to. Um, and also, there, of course, is the impact on the grammar school to setting up with the gymnasium. So, don't know. As a suggestion, looking to our neighbors of Ashfield who uh, do a town meeting with a lunch break every year on a Saturday, I would say I would entertain uh, an honest motion to uh, adjourn till 4 p.m. today and start up again. Well, I, I know.
Chris Bathurst, Williams, 393 Williamsburg Road, on the motion to do it on another day. So in a discussion phase of that, because I think that would be maybe the next thing, I just want to know if we were to do it another day, is there any implications of expenditures of money, any impact on budgets? Like, you know, if, so we should just know that there is, there is or is not no, no, some significant the, the, impact the, the payment for the people to check in, that's $100 a day. Oh, okay. The, Mary McClintock. Um, I'm all in favor of not having low blood sugar. However, <laughs> my sense is that if there were to be, if it were to be, if we adjourn now and finished it another day, there would have to be some kind of legal notice of that process, and that is not free. That would take staff time, and I presume some kind of mailing or I don't know, or legal notices in the paper. I don't know what it no, is, but it's not required. I, I would, so. I would actually respectfully ask that that motion get um, retracted, and we have another motion for uh, um, for a recess. So that's that was probably that was probably sort of a point of order, but the 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 reality is, town meeting has the authority to adjourn to another day on its own. Well, how about so, to recess on its own? And, or, and, or recess, yes. Okay. Yeah. The quorum is still 25. 25. Bob Armstrong. I'm wondering if we could have another, I'll call it five minutes, stand up and stretch break while the FCAT guys can, can talk to each other back in the corner and they can decide what they can manage to do. I mean, right, right now, you know, they, they're here videotaping it, but if we did it on another day, I don't know what that would do, but they, but, but they would have to talk to each other to find out who can stay and whatever. Okay. I, I'm, I'm recommending we recess till 4 p.m. Okay. Three? Three. Point of order. We do have a motion on the floor. Okay, they're accepting the amendment to recess until 3 o'clock. Okay. Let's vote on that. You know what, we're going to do this as a voice vote, okay? So the amendment is now to adjourn. Of the, or the original one was to meet another day. That's now been amended, and they've accepted amendment to recess till 3 o'clock. So we're going to vote on recessing to 3 o'clock. Pizza in my house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, okay, so let's vote on... The motion to recess to 3 o'clock. Verbal. Verbal. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. <laughs> All right. I, the ayes have it. Ooh. <laughs> I hate we will be, ba we'll be back at 3. <laughs> be careful. Keep your, you Go have try. to keep your clickers, but don't lose them. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man, that wasn't. I'm not. It wasn't enough alcohol. Article. Whoop. Yeah. Article 18. To see if the town will vote to transfer $20,000 from everybody's favorite free cash into the OPEB trust fund, which we just talked about, or take any action relative thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer $20,000 from free cash into the OPEB trust fund so that the town may meet future retirement costs of current and future retirees. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mary McClintock. No, you're not. <laughs> not really. Um, th 
so just a clarification. We were talking before about an opioid litigation settlement fund. That's a whole other world. Yep. What does OPEB stand for? It's in the, um, yeah, in the glossary on your warrant light. Other, oops. Yeah. Other post employment benefits liability trust fund. Sorry, that was too loud. <laughs> I'll have to get up and speak this way. Oh, oh he's got you. So other post-employment benefits, it's for health insurance business and retirees. Yeah, you better keep the mic closer. So anyway, we have about 110,000 in it. We have an actuarial estimate done every two years with our municipal audit. And our total liability is about $1.2 million, actuarially. So that we put a token amount of 20,000 in annually is actually a good stead by the town if we go to borrow money that shows that we're being you know, fiscally re you know, responsible. Overall, the state is facing an OPEB liability crisis, it's like the Social Security deficit. But, you know, it is what it is. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. Pressing. I'm not getting an okay. Does that? Oh, got it. Sorry. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 18. Pa or, yep. Article 18 passes 57 to zero. Article 19, to see if the town will vote to transfer $12,811 from free cash to the general fund for a partial debt service for the highway garage facility or take any action relative thereto. <laughs> I move that the town vote to transfer $12,811 from free cash to pay for the partial debt service for the highway garage facility. Got a motion and a second, discussion? Seeing no hands, can we vote please? Voting is open. Yep. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article 19 passes 61 to 2. Article 20. Oh, yeah, sorry. I move that the town vote to authorize the treasurer and collector to enter into compensating balance agreements. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Explanation. So the, um, this is a required article, according to the town attorney, which allows the treasurer and the collector to enter into agreements with banks, which is like a totally basic function of that position. Um, a, technically, a yes vote, which we did last year, grants three years permission to do so, but the reality is that that's difficult to track, so that we do this every year. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote, please. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Oh, yeah, I, 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 it took me a Motion pass, passes 61 to zero.
Article 21. I move that the town vote to transfer $10,000 from free cash to cover compensated absences. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Explanation, Explanation please. This is how the town pays out accrued vacation benefits. Without setting up this fund, the town could suddenly have to come up with a large amount of funds if an employee unexpectedly retires. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote on Article 21. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 56 to 1. Article 22. I move that the town vote to transfer up to $24,000 from the overlay account for conversion expenses for use by the Board of Assessors. I have a motion and second. Discussion or explanation? Lee Whitcomb. That cough doesn't sound good. There we go. For many years, we had a valuation program that was designed by and supported by the State Department of Revenue. However, because not all of the towns in the Commonwealth used it, the state decided that they, it was not their job to continue to support and, and uphold and update a program that was not used by everyone. Um, it was a super, super little program, <laughs> but at any rate, they agreed to enter into the effort of finding a program to replace it, and they did and recommended one uh, which is an adaptation from a national program used in other states. 72 towns originally transferred into the new program. They're down to about 30 left. Uh, about 40 have given up and gone to something else because the program that was recommended and that we installed for fiscal 21 and have used since is just not well suited to Massachusetts. It had a number of internal issues that didn't work correctly. Uh, the training was minimal. The support is from people who are technology people but not assessors, and maybe in Florida, maybe in Ohio, don't know Massachusetts law. So we've seriously been thinking about changing to a different program that is well established in Massachusetts. It's called Patriot Properties, or used to be, and it's now Catalyst AP5 but well-tested, proven for decades in Massachusetts. The costs, total cost of conversion would be 23,000 plus. And so we put this in as money to cover it should we finally decide to change. There is one other program coming out from the company that currently does our billing, tax billing. And we would like to see the demonstration of that at the end of this month before we make decisions. So a vote of yes on this would put the funds aside to cover conversion to a new program should we decide that it is necessary and best. Um, if we decided in the long run to stay with the program we have, Tyler, this money would close out to free cash next year or whenever. Um, it's, it's setting aside a little something to use. It's coming out of overlay which means it is not coming, uh, going to inf uh, affect the tax rate in any way. It's not from raise and appropriate. Uh, any questions? Okay. <laughs> any other discussion? Okay. Hearing no other discussion, this is Article 22. Let's vote.
Five seconds. Voting is closed. It passes 67 to 1. Article 23. I move that the town vote to transfer $5,000 from free cash to fund a partial contribution for future revaluation work. I have a motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? This is an annual request so that we put aside a small amount every year toward revaluation work. Some of it now is done every year. We have to have an outside um, consultant determine the values on the personal property of the electric companies, for example, here in town, Western Mass and uh, Eversource, NSTAR. And we have to have the hydroelectric plant revalued every time we have a revaluation. That's several thousand dollars. And so in order to cover these funds, we have a little running fund uh, for revaluation work. And by doing it this way, we don't have to put 20 or $30,000 into it all at once every six or seven years. Yeah. Any other discussion, Article 23? I'm Devlin Selman again, 2300 Main Poland Road. Um, my question is, um, since you have this money for the, from the free cash for the um, future revaluation, are you guys going to be doing that with Nexamp, um, who has put the industrial solar facility behind our house because it's been a really big disaster? And I just want to clarify that it was shut down because it was pumping out dirty electricity into our homes and affecting my children's health and well-being, as well as mine. So it's very dangerous, and that's why it's been shut down for a year and a half, and we still have no answers as to what's going on with their equipment. So I, wanna, I would like to, to know a little bit more about that, if you guys are going to be doing future evaluation um, for Nexamp's um, company. Yeah. Lee Whitcomb. The Nexamp situation is a little bit different from standard valuation work. With a um, project like that, towns usually enter into a pilot agreement beforehand, before the project is, is uh, completely finished or in determination, based on the maximum capacity, the maximum production capacity of what's being built. That's what Conway did. We have a 30-year contract with them in which the amount that they will pay is spelled out for each year. There's a one and a half percent increase for each year whether it runs or not. And so it's not dependent upon the system being in working order. We receive this money regardless. Um, right now, it is about $66,000 a year for the personal property, which is the, the panels and the equipment. Plus, the land underneath all of that has been, uh, the value of that has now gone to a rate compensate with it being industrial land. And so the loan landowners pay a much higher value on that land as well. Again, whether it's working or not. Doesn't matter to the con kind of the town of Conway is still receiving the revenue. That's good to know. I was wondering about that. Yep. Because I just think that that money that they're paying our town, almost eighty one thousand dollars to maybe go to the the fee that I, that the town wants me to pay four hundred and thirty five Well, you know. I, I understand your concern and, and the uh, question. And that is an administrative matter. We do have this revenue of about 81000 right this year coming in from next amp uh, as general revenue, just as all our tax dollars are. Language, please. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Language. Okay. Well, I, yes, I, I hear, I hear it. But um, any valuation, any tax bill is public record. You can call our office at any time and ask 
how much does the, is the value on this property or, or what is the town receiving from that property? It's the re information's readily available. All public record, we're happy to tell you. Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion, Article 23? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article passes, 60 yes, two no. Article 25. 24. 24. I move that the town vote to transfer $5,000 from free cash to fund a partial contribution to replenish the grant match and administration account. I have a motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? So this allows the town to provide a match for grants if a grant application comes down the pike outside the town meeting schedule for approval, and that happens frequently. The current account has $8,350, so this would raise the amount of grant match available to $13,350. And this is especially useful since many of the state grants have reduced the, the, the percentage of grant matching funds that must be brought to bear. It always was one third, sometimes even one half. Now it's frequently 10%. So it makes applying for grants more desirable and we have to be able to move quickly. And it's easier to do it this way than it is to summon an entire town meeting for this purpose. So. <clears throat> Any other discussion, Article 24? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 63 yes, one no. Article 25. I move that the town vote to transfer $2,845 from free cash to the field library to help ensure its accreditation. I have a motion and second. Discussion or explanation? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 61 to nothing. Article 26. I move that the town vote to rescind Article 3 of the May 14th, 2018 annual town meeting, which was to pay for the cost of the bridge repair for North Poland Road. I have a motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? Here's where your town government pats itself in the back and takes a little victory lap. <laughs> because we voted to spend, uh, what was it, hundreds of thousands of dollars? $330,000 to fix this bridge. And lo and behold, the bridge goes and gives out on us before we could get to it. And um, through an all of government response and a really well coordinated one, um, we got the state to build a temporary bridge, um, which is extraordinarily rare that they were able to do this in just a month or two. What was it, like two months, three months? Three months. Um, but yeah, the state paid for it. We don't have to. Hooray. So that's what this is. We're rescinding that 
permission, that, that money, we don't have to pay for it. Any other discussion? Article 26. Um, C.S. Stewart, 186 North Poland Road, and thank you so much <laughs> for that bridge. Um, but I don't know how the, where the funds come from for the permanent bridge in a couple of years. Do you know the answer to that? I, I, my I, we have not been told that we're going to have a bill for it yet, so... Okay. Uh, we, we, we tried our best to really be nice to all the state people. We did a whole, we did a whole grand opening thing. We did, we did uh, you know, we had the, all the photographers there, the, the, the state employees from the transportation department that, that never get recognized. We recognize them. And all of a sudden, they're moving really quickly on this. And thank you to um, Burnett, the Burnetts, yes, Bill, Bill um, for, for while the workers were there, they brought coffee and, and baked goods to them every morning. Um, thank and, you, like, Deb Craven. Deb Craven, thank you. Oh, my God. Like, and, and so the workers, the, the, the state workers were like, we want to get back here as soon as we can. <laughs> um, so, um, and they, they're going about planning and engineering this thing, and they haven't said, you need to pay for this. So oh, we're, yeah, Ron, Ron might know better. Yeah, and I, I want to say thank you very much to you and your crew and to the police and the fire for keeping us safe during that time. Ron Sweet. So for the bridge, the bridge was already scheduled to be replaced in 2023 this year because of COVID and the lack of engineers with mass DOT, it got pushed back to 24. Now this has been planned for three or four years, the state will be paying for it. But because of the deterioration of the bridge is why they closed, closed it because of the condition of it. And because of all the good work from all the people around is why we have a temporary bridge. But it is now scheduled to be replaced in fiscal year 25. And we're in the process, the town has some legal stuff to do with right away and stuff like that. But other than that, that's the only expense that the town will have for this. And we've already appropriated money for this. Thank you, Ronnie. Any other discussion? Article 26. Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 64 to 1. It's 27. Article 27. I move that the town vote to allow the select board to apply for, accept, and expend state, federal, and other grants which do not require a town appropriation or town meeting approval. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? This is a formality that the town lawyer recommended. Um, it allows the select board to pursue any and all grants that don't require a town meeting vote or a town meeting appropriation of town funds. To me, we already had that authority. But the, but the lawyer says we should do this, so we're doing it. So. Any other discussion? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 66 to 0. We're getting there. Article 28. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to acquire in fee by eminent domain for flood control, public safety, and other municipal purposes related to the South River Flood Resiliency Project and other municipal purposes, the following described parcel, 
the half interest in the property owned by the estate of Mary Bay and the half interest in the property owned by the Salvation Army for a total sum of the appraised price of $4,700, the property being located at Zero Shelburne Falls Road, Assessor's Tax Map 410, Lot 26.6, and consisting of 1.36 acres, more or less. We have a motion and a second. Uh, this takes a two-thirds vote. Any discussion or explanation needed? Lee would come. <laughs> this, this is a very interesting one. Uh, some of you who have been here in town many years may remember Dr. Bay. He was the town physician. He lived up in that beautiful house up on the top of Cemetery Hill Road above the Howland Cemetery. And he and his wife were wonderful residents, and uh, this was their home. They had two children, Mary and Robert. Dr. Bay had inherited that house, or purchased it, from Jack Chesborough, who was Conway's Major League Baseball player back in the 20s. Jack had no children. He is his wife, Mabel. And he left everything to Mabel. They owned that big, big house. They owned a lot of land in the area. He was, um, after he left baseball, he cut logs and sold wood for a living. But at any rate, they left everything to Dr. Bay. Dr. Bay, in turn, left everything to his wife and Rosina, and she thought she sold everything off during the course of her life. She sold the house to the martyrs. They sold other pieces of land that they owned in town. They simply didn't realize that they owned this strip. If you go from the center of town, go out past the cemetery on Shelburne Falls Road, it comes up on your right. There's a little Ford over the river in there, and it kind of winds around a little bit till you get to another ford that goes out to a field. And it's that silly strip in between the road and the river. That's this piece. When we finally found Mary Bay out in eastern Massachusetts, she was astounded that she owned anything in Conway and delighted. She said, oh, can I come back and vote? And we said, no, but <laughs> anyway, it tickled her to pieces. But at any rate, um, so she and her brother had inherited it from their mother equally. Her brother had passed away previously, leaving everything of his to the Salvation Army. Hence, the Salvation Army. And she has since passed away. And so it's part of her estate. So buying this gets that little piece of a land for the town. It gives us control over it for flood control, all of that type of thing. And uh, clears the title, actually. <laughs> yeah. So it will be owned by the town I'll, I'll the, yeah, for the cost yeah, of $4,700. Yeah. So and I'll just add to that about the eminent domain piece of it because those are, to a lot of people, those are dirty words. Um, <clears throat> just so that you know, this is eminent domain at the request of the people that we're buying this from, which is very unusual. Um, and the, <clears throat> because the Bays owned half of it and they, the other half in the will went to Salvation Army. Salvation Army, among other things, is a big national organization. They, didn't, they were not aware that they had an ownership in this either. And just the amount of effort that it took to get that organization that wasn't aware of this to acknowledge that they have it and then to agree to get, dispose of it. So and when, when both the Bays and Salvation Army looked into this, the cost that they would have to do just to, in legal fees to go through a normal sales procedure, they, were, they begged us to take this by eminent domain. Um, and so that's, and we get it at the, at the appraised value, we get the flood control benefits, the dry hydrant benefits, um, and the, it's a win-win situation. And the yes vote allows the town to take the property and pay out $2,350 to each of the two owners. And this is another really good job by the town government. Sorry, it is. Um, Any other discussion? Uh, Article 28. Hearing none, let's vote. If 
Five seconds. Voting's closed. Motion passes 64 to 1. Article 29. I move that the town vote to appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund with each item considered a separate appropriation. We skip to B. Yep. $45,000 to the Town of Conway Select Board to provide a 13.89% match for a $324,000 Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Vulnerability Grant that will model and study the potential impacts of South River flooding on the town center and provide solutions for the center's protection from the budgeted reserve account fund. Do I, I have a motion and a second. This is only on part B. But I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Explanation? Explanation. Once again, Lee Whitcomb. We hit my part of the meeting here. Um, as as um, Jocelyn, Jocelyn Forbush explained earlier, the part of the legal requirements in the Community Preservation Act are to set aside a certain amount of reserve money every year into the different categories provided. Now, this money comes from that little extra bill on our tax bill. Our tax bill, bill may say X number of dollars for taxes and other, or there's a, it may say CPA. There's another little amount of 25, 30, 50, 75 dollars. That goes into the Community Preservation Fund directly from our taxes, it's a uh, percentage of the tax itself. That goes in to build the fund. So the fund has four, five different categories, four different categories. One is community preservation. It has a sub-fund, you might call it a special savings account within its overall uh, umbrella. One for community preservation and historical resources the second for community housing reserve, the third for open space, and the fourth is the administrative end of things. By law, you have to put together, put away at least 10% each year of that year's revenue into the three categories and 5% into administration. A town can put in more if they choose to, if they want to throw more into historical or whatever. But usually this is just our little housekeeping to put 10 into each. Uh, the amount of community preservation fund that was billed this year was just over $98,000. And when someone gets an abatement or an exemption, they may be refunded their community preservation fund charge. So we take the 98,000, then we deduct whatever we've had to give back because someone got an abatement an exemption, or you can apply for an exemption just on the community preservation charge itself. That figure, after we take out those, is considered the annual revenue, and that's what, where we base the 10% for each of the categories and 5% for the reserve. This had to be figured out uh, before we had the absolute final figures, so the 9,500 estimated three times and then the 4,750 estimated were the figures at the time a number of weeks ago. Quite frankly, they're just about the same right now. Uh, if we had to go to exact figures, it would be 94,800 and something. So I recommend that we simply say 9,500 uh, 90, yeah. Yeah, 9, yeah. each into the three categories and 4,750 into okay. the budget of reserve for administration. Okay. Okay. So, so that was an, that was an explana excellent explanation of paragraph C. Um, and so, so remember, when we get to paragraph C, remember that? Yep. Um, but we're on paragraph B. Oh, I know it, but it's, it's um, a, it goes with the whole thing, because B is determined to come out of one of those categories, budget to reserve, okay, which is where the 5% usually goes every year. So it's there waiting. Yeah. Thanks. 
Okay, any more discussion on paragraph B? Hearing, oh, Joe Strugowski, everybody. Thank you. Uh, just an explanation on the continuing saga with the river. This is part of our project that we've been working on for, I think, 12 or 13 years. We started working on the South River after Hurricane Irene. Uh, we're now working on municipal vulnerability preparedness. And part of that is we're trying to understand going forward with climate change and everything, what the effects will be on the center of town. So some of this money would be used to hire uh, GCA, which is, will do a hydraulic and uh, hydrology analysis of the river under uh, adverse weather conditions, if you will, to see if we can determine what's causing the flooding in the center of town and then to work towards remediation. We, you know, we believe that uh, the bridge might be too small, but we need to, we can't go to the state and say your bridge is too small. We have to, we have to have some evidence. So a good portion of this money would go towards trying to mitigate flooding of the South River and in particular in the center of town. Any question for me? Yeah, I do. Uh, what's, what will make this study different than the previous ones that were done a few years ago? Um, it, it's really ongoing work. In this case, they would actually use computer modeling to model the, the river and then subject it to adverse flooding conditions, if you will, you know, extended rainfall, and they would, the model would then tell them where, is it the, is it Pumpkin Hollow Brook, is it South River, is it the bridge too small, why does the water go down in front of the library in, in a storm event, and hopefully we'll gather more information, and that would be used to support a request for a new bridge, if that's what was needed. And, and Do you have anything else, Jeremy? No, go ahead. Uh, um, the, no, it's okay. The, the, the reason that I, that, uh, that I support this is because the, the specific work that would be done in this is to examine the carrying capacity of the culverts underneath the bridge on Academy Hill Road and the bridge 116 in front of your house. And um, just going, reflecting back on Hurricane Irene and how quickly the, the, the village flooded there and how, how the water at the time, it was perceived that the flooding was coming from the lack of carrying capacity of those two culverts. And the, the, the way that this state works with bridge reimbursement and with getting the state to pay for bridges, especially bridges that are in otherwise perfect working order, um, you need data like this. And once you, if, if there is a study, and if the study does show that in, in terms of high, in times of high flooding, the culvert is inadequate, those culverts are inadequate, we jump to the head of the line and the state pays for the, and so I like that whole part of jumping to the head of the line um, so that the town doesn't have to pay for these very expensive bridge projects and that's what this project would allow. If, if I could just follow up on that. Um, to answer your question about how this differs from the previous work, there, you know, um, a lot of the people in this room have been involved with it for a dozen years. The reports that have come out a lot of them, what they've done is they've outlined all the problem areas along the South River that need to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. This was one of the ones that was identified as a high priority. So what this grant does is allow us to get the hydrologic and hyd hydraulic engineering, that data that was just explained, so that we will have something factual to be able to then move forward to find solutions to the problems. Okay. Any other discussion? Paragraph B. Hearing none, let's vote. This is Article 29, number B. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes. 59 yes, 7 no. Article 29, paragraph C. So it's, um, 
I move that the town vote to appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund with each item considered a, considered a separate appropriation. C, from fiscal year 2024 annual revenue estimated 10% to the Community Preservation Historical Resources Reserve, $9,500 estimate, 10% to the Community Preservation Community Housing Reserve, $9,500 estimate, 10% to the Community Preservation Open Space Reserve, $9,500 estimate, 5% from fiscal year 2024 annual revenues for administration of the Community Preservation Committee, $4,750 estimate, and the remainder to the Community Preservation Budgeted Reserve, $61,750 estimate. I have a motion and a second. Discussion, explanation? Mary McClintock. I always ask this. Um, I love putting money in the little pots in the Community Preservation Fund, and I also love knowing how much is in each of those little pots. So could somebody read us the list of there's this much in open space and this much in historic and this much in housing or whatever? Does anybody have that? I don't have it. Jocelyn? Is Jocelyn still here? Uh, when Jocelyn was last with us, she did say that she had that with her. Um, we, we could so, definitely make an effort to post that on the website as soon as we get done so that everybody could look it up. Any other discussion on C? Hearing none, let's vote. Article 29, C. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion passes 68 to 1. Article 30. I move that the town vote to amend its general bylaws by removing from section nine personnel bylaw, paragraph F that is struck out, used to say all voting members appointed must not be a current employee or elected official for a period of three years prior to serving on the personnel committee. So we're striking that out and replacing it with a new paragraph F that says, all voting members appointed must not be currently paid employees of the town of Conway. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Any? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article passes 64 to 2. Article 31. I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 39, Section 23D for all adjudicatory hearings as presented in the warrant. I have a motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? All right, um, a yes vote would accept this provision in Massachusetts General Laws, which allows members of boards, committees, or commissions to miss one meeting of a multi-meeting hearing and still vote if the hearing has been continued after they abide by the required provisions of reviewing all testimony, minutes, and evidence from that first meeting that they missed. Any more discussion? Hearing none, let's vote.
Five seconds. Voting is closed. Article is passed, 62 to 2, one abstention. Article 32. I move that the town vote to accept Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53G, and amend its general bylaws by adding the language to the town bylaws pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53G, as presented in the warrant. Second. I have motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting is closed. So moved, 62 to two. Article 33. I move that the town vote to amend its existing zoning bylaws by amending Article 11, Adult Use Recreational Marijuana Establishments, Section 11.5R, as presented in the warrant. This is a two thirds majority vote. We have a motion and a second. Discussion or explanation? Yeah. Do you want an explanation? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's do that. Hi, I'm Beth Gershman. I'm the chair of the planning board. I live on Hoosack Road. Um, this Warren article is actually a slight change to our existing Article 11, and it's intended to address one particular business model for these establishments, namely a craft marijuana cultivation cooperative. The cooperative business model is predicated upon new members joining the cooperative, new members who are actually owners, which in this, and it's only specifically done in a cooperative type of business model. Uh, the planning board considered it both impractical and unnecessary to require a new special permit with any transfer of ownership greater than 10% if the establishment is operating under the craft cooperative model. I can take questions on that. I have lots more to say about it, but maybe we're all exhausted. But I'm happy to take questions. No questions. Could you just explain? Explain more than that. So, so in our in our existing bylaw, the um, requirement is that if there's a 10% change of ownership that you then have to come back to the town for a new special permit. Because this business model is predicated upon changes of ownership, and the state has actually set this aside as a, as a certain kind of business model for marijuana establishments, um, that would just mean that every year, if the craft co-op was operating, it would have to come back for a new permit. Um, whenever anybody gets added, to a license as an owner or a staff member or whatever, the state has a whole lot of uh, legal requirements that you have to go through. And the state is prepared to vet people and do background checks and approve them to be on the license. We are, in fact, not. prepared for that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, let's vote on Article 33. Five seconds. Voting is closed. Motion carries 57 to 4, two abstentions.
Article 34. I move that the town vote to amend its existing zoning bylaws by amending Article 8 as presented in the warrant. It's a two-thirds majority vote. I have a motion and a second. Explanation or discussion? Yes. Hi. <laughs> We're so close to the end of this thing, I just want to say congratulations to us, still here, still doing this good work. Um, so to keep pace with evolving telecommunications technology, the Conway Planning Board proposes that we update our town cell phone bylaws. Article 8 of, the, of our protective zoning bylaws was originally adopted in 2000 and last updated in 2005. A lot of things have changed since then. Um, our current telecommunication bylaw was written very broadly and uh, we want to add a measure of specificity to the bylaw. The planning board members believe that this will help applicants understand the town's expectations in advance. These revisions that we're proposing are intended to better accommodate wireless telecommunication needs of residents and businesses while protecting Conway's scenic, historic, and natural resources. We're adding some definitions, we're removing outdated language, uh, we're adding more detail for certain requirements, for example, specific protections for historic districts and buildings. We're also proposing changes that stipulate that landowners and developers of wireless facilities ensure safe roadway access to the site, submit a plan for maintenance of the access road, ensure protective screening by creating a no-cut zone around proposed facilities, and for the first time, we are proposing some basic provisions governing what people call small cell 5G telecommunications facilities that someday, not in the immediate future, but someday may be proposed along our public rights, uh, road rights of way. And these are uh, small cell transmitters. They're significantly smaller than traditional cell towers, but they're larger than streetlights and they're typically located along streets and roads in densely settled areas. This is section 8.3 of the proposed changes. So you know, of course, that anything in uh, italics, italics is proposed addition to this, to this bylaw. Happy, and we worked, I just wanna say thanks to the planning board for hanging in there with, with this. We worked on this for quite a while. We uh, talked to telecommunications experts, we talked to other towns who have attempted an overhaul of their um, wireless bylaws, and we talked to the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. We had a public hearing, and uh, we're happy with it. <laughs> we hope you are too. Any other questions? No. Chris, do you have anything to add? No? Okay. Any other dis oh <laughs> I'll be very quick. Hey, um, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I believe that Beth is retiring as chair of the planning board. And I, I, I would love to see all of us give her a big round of thanks because she has done an incredible job. <laughs> Any other discussion? Article 34. Hearing none, let's vote. Five seconds. Voting's closed. Motion passes 66 to 1. Article 35. I move that the, I move that. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to forward the non binding citizens' petition on making Con Conway pollinator friendly 
to Governor Maura T. Healy, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources Commissioner Ashley E. Randall, State Senator Paul W. Mark, and State Representative Natalie Blay. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Kate McDonough. Explanation. Kate McDonough. Last but not least, um, and I want to thank everybody for staying this long and commend you. Um, Kate McDonough from North Hill Drive, and I urge you to show support for pollinators by passing this non-binding resolution to designate Conway as a pollinator-friendly community and to prioritize native plantings in landscaping and restoration efforts. First, there is no request for funds related to this resolution. Second, to help answer common questions, we provided an information sheet, and you can look for copies that were on some of the seats. Um, you can also find this and other resources on the town website. There's a QR code on the, on the bottom of this sheet, or you can just go to the town website um, and search for Pollinate. And third, Pollinate Conway, which is a volunteer organization, proposed this resolution to raise awareness about the serious threats to native pollinators to educate our community about the issues and to inspire you, our neighbors, to take steps that support pollinators, potentially helping to reverse the steep decline in insect populations. And looking at this through the lens of human self-interest, we need pollinators to pollinate our food crops. We rely on pollinators and their services for one out of every three bites of food that we eat. And don't we all want the children and grandchildren of Conway to experience the beauty and wonder of a diversity of birds, butterflies, and caterpillars. As a non-binding resolution, it does not require anyone to change their current practices. Rather, it presents ideals and goals that we aspire to. Each Conway landowner has the right to make choices about how they use their land and to make changes at their own pace, if at all. The, this resolution suggests practices for you to consider to better support pollinators, their habitats, and local ecosystems. And by passing this resolution, Conway would join towns across the state from Williamstown to Cape Cod that are declaring their communities as pollinator friendly and taking positive steps to support pollinators. Conway would join a growing movement that supports the health of our town and our planet for humans, for pollinators, and for other living beings. So I want to thank you, and if you have questions about the resolution, I, along with my co-volunteers, Kendall Clark and Cynthia Lawton-Singer, will do our best to answer them. So please vote yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? Article 35. Cool. Anything else? Hearing nothing, let's vote. Five seconds. Motion to adjourn to, to the, for the election. Voting is closed. Motion passes 59 to 10. So um, we have one final motion. And but quick, before we do this, the secret sauce to Conway government functioning is volunteers. We, we need Cable Advisory Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, Community and Economic Development Committee, Community Preservation Committee, Conservation Commission, Newsletter Committee, Open Space Committee, Parks and Rec Committee, Personnel Committee, Zoning Board of Appeals. All these have positions available to anyone that wants them. And we, could, we, we, need, we need people. Please volunteer. You stuck it out this long, you might be game. Um, <laughs> With, with that, I move to adjourn this town meeting until... <laughs> uh, wait, wait, uh, Any discussion? Wait, 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 no, 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 uh, no. Uh. Until, until Thursday, June 8th, 2023, to the town hall between the hours of 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. to bring in their votes for various town officers as set forth in the town warrant. That's it. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? No. 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Adjourn. Before you leave, I'd like to say two things. Ah, uh, three things. Thank you for hanging in this whole thing. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, well, and I apologize for the first hour of this meeting, because I got to be honest, it totally changed my idea of how much fun this weekend was. <laughs> Until that first hour, I thought, well, I now think the highlight of my weekend was my colonoscopy yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, man. I cannot tell a lie. Oh, man. Thank you very much, especially for coming back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, don't forget to leave your clickers. Yeah, colonoscopy was wonderful now. <laughs>